anything so, I do, mm -hmm. I when I do hear my voice, it sounds like Fran Drescher, and <laughs> it makes me hate myself. Oh, I don't think it sounds like Fran Drescher. And I like your voice. It makes me feel comforted. Thank you. You have an incredibly soothing voice. <gasps> I've talked about it before. Also, the way you talk is sort of, um, it's like a pantameter that's incredibly <laughs> hypnotic. I'm not even joking. I've talked really? to people about this. Okay, like, explain it to me. Like what you just did. You went, yeah, like, explain okay. it to me. Like, yeah. you just have, like, a very interesting intonation and <laughs> an odd spacing between words. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I swear no, 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 you're so right. Because I swear, when I, when I do any kind of role, I have to look at how I talk and realize that, oh, I think the way that I talk in real life does not come across, across good on camera because I, I put weird spaces. <laughs> but it's captivating and it's like... Because you're like, did a, you think I glitched? Because you're like, she's having a stroke. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> trying to figure out if she's going to get the you're, word out. You're so right. I do have... No one's ever brought that up to me, but I know it about myself. I I will pause. I li sometimes if I've ever caught an interview, like if someone's in like, oh, it's on, let's watch it. And I'm like, wow, I pause weirdly. You pause at random times. <laughs> You're right. But in a way that I was thinking about it last night because I was like watching a lot of your show, uh, talk show appearances and, and podcasts and stuff. And I think it's actually just you're thoughtful and mm -hmm. <laughs> you just don't talk a mile a minute like I do and just like huh. puke out everything. Like you're actually <laughs> just thinking about what you're saying when you speak. Um, but I was thinking about it a lot yesterday. That's interesting. Well, I it, it, think a lot, a lot of it is from thinking about... <laughs> Well, oh my God, I'm <laughs> I made you I so am. conscious. No, but I do. I I do think. But I think a lot of it has to do with I do speak fast, but I do take more pauses because I am more. <laughs> I do second guess what I say, and I want to make sure I'm saying the right thing. And then what's really disappointing is that when I don't, I'm like I took all those pauses. <laughs> <laughs> and I regret everything I said, which happens a lot. I took a bunch of time to think to about say, it. And, and I'd like to say something I regret. <laughs> How do we rewind that? Yeah. But no, there was something f captivating about it. Like there's that book, The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene. And one of the things he says in order to seduce people is to kind of talk really quietly so that they have to lean into you. Oh. And I obviously don't seduce anyone because I scream when I talk. I actually make them recoil, frankly. <laughs> and I was listening to you last night. I was like, I wonder if this is like some kind of hypnotic, like art of seduction life hack. Because I think I, I would be much more successful. I think I would I would be the Joe Rogan of podcasts if, <laughs> if that was some kind of art of seduction. If I knew that, but what, by the way, I might now be. You might. You now have just inspired. Here me. it is. <laughs> like you come on my podcast. One of our lights fell on you, so you own my house now. If you want I can't to sue wait. me, <laughs> I like your house. I'd like to own it after you renovate it. So I'm gonna jump around a lot, please. But the first thing I always like to ask people when they come on the show is if we're friends. Yes, we are friends. You and I are friends. We are friends that we don't hang out a lot mm -hmm. or ever. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Because I first, in, yeah. <laughs> but when we do. Which was today um, and another an event, you know. But no, here's the difference. Okay, yes. Do we, are you one of my closest <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but what? But I could call you at any point or text you and say, like, I need to ask you something on the real. Like, what do you think about this? Yeah. And I can ask you something that needs to stay private, yep. and it will. And if I ever needed you, and I could call you and said, like, can you call me back? I know you'd call me back or text me back. There are people that in this business where you're like, oh yeah, we're friends, and like I text them, and I don't, I don't like, I don't really know if they will. But it's because of your character. I know who you are and how we connect. Mm -hmm. I. I know that that's why I think of you as a friend, even if we don't really get to hang out outside of like, you know, a, an event. Which is, it's weird. I, I think, I feel very, very close to you. Mm. And there's no reason for it. <laughs> it's totally unearned. I feel like we just, whether it's through the, the mm. animal connection or just we kind of came up at the same time, mm -hmm. like I feel very close to you and like we have the same values and I, I actually, as I get older and as we have less and less time and we get busier and busier and our lives get crazier and crazier, I value more than ever relationships where you're like, if we don't see each other for six months and right. you call, I'm like, I know she needs something and I know if I need something, I can call her and we can just fucking get right to it. 
Yeah. No small talk, no pleasantries, no formalities. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, what do you know about this situation? A hundred percent. And that's you. So wait, would you consider, are we friends? I always ask this just in the beginning because- I know, and I'm asking you, People in Hollywood are so- (laughs) I'm asking you now, why are you (laughs) not answering? truly my closest friend. I'm horrified to hear that (laughs) this is less formal than I thought. You know, it's interesting. I have such a fascinating- uh, She didn't answer. Journey with you. No. I actually have had resentment at you before because I think we should be like really close friends. Oh. Don't you think? I think that we should be really. And actually hanging out with you today earlier before this was like, oh, I want to do this more. And I think that every time we do hang out, I'm like, oh, like Mm -hmm. I just and I never I always feel like in this business, women are like pitted against each other in a weird way and are made to compete with each other and are just there's so much weirdness that I always am like, oh, this person probably doesn't want to be my friend or like, mm-hmm. oh, this person probably doesn't like me. Like, I have a lot of that shit. I have a ton of that. You know, I, yeah, I, I just assume nobody likes me and nobody wants to be friends with me and like, don't push it and don't try to hang out. Yeah, uh, well, I, I definitely feel, I feel like that there's a thing of. um, It's like. What are we going to do? Am I interesting enough? Am I going to be fun enough? Or do I have enough money to hang out with you? Am I as famous as you? Am I like, it's like, that's how it is mm-hmm. for a lot of people. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like, you know, you meet, make friends with people. And, and I think Instagram makes me very nervous about hanging out with other people. The way that they show their life, how, wow. like how pretty they are all the time. Or, wow. or the, I see their homes and I'm just like, oh, I just don't, I'm like, this is just, it's, it, it does bring up a lot of anxiety and insecurity. And I just think. I also don't think that I could roll with, I'm like, I don't know what you're, like a lot of people are off like doing a lot of shit. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. Can we just hang out at the house? Like, do you like that? Because yeah. I look on Instagram, it doesn't look like Right. That. It looks like you only want to be on like yachts and like huge, like, can mm-hmm. we just kick it on the couch and be boring? Because that's, I am secretly the most boring person on the planet mm-hmm. who pretends to have a really exciting life. <laughs> and I actually am at the point where I don't even... Uh, I worry about being friends with people because when someone does come into my life now, I'm like, this has been false advertising. I'm really not that fun. <laughs> like, well, you know what I have a a, a problem with, or not problem with, what, what ends up probably hurting my feelings more is when I make friends with people and then we have hung out and then, then they go and they do something or have a party and then I'm not invited. And you're like, oh, what? you know, or, or I will say this, even though I don't, I, I've never said this out loud, but I thought of it. And I was like, I don't. It's one of those things where I'm also insecure about like the things that I admit to being insecure about, you know, because you don't want to. But like when you're friends, with, you think you're friends with somebody or you've worked with them and then like they don't follow you on Instagram, like something small like that where you're like, but they're following all these other people. Yeah. And like and then you're following, and then you're just like it just it's one of the it's a weird marker now for like. Yeah. How close like, are we? Or, yeah, because especially if somebody is like following a lot of other people, mm-hmm. not even how close are we, but I feel like do you even like respect me or like me Mm -hmm. enough to like, you know, follow along with whatever it is I'm doing. Even though I feel like you'd like me a lot more if you didn't follow me. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I wish that I didn't even have an Instagram so there wouldn't be that marker. Right. It'd be like, oh, I want to be that cool girl that's like, I don't even have an Instagram or Twitter. It's like, I'm just, I'm so mysterious. Yeah, I'm not at all. I'm desperate for love (laughs) at all costs uh, and will broadcast every second of my life. Um, It's interesting. You make a ton of money. It's, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> isn't it weird how when a woman says that they're gross? Mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm not gonna let that I didn't happen. I think that was gross. Good. I'm not gonna let that gross. happen. I'm happy that you make a lot of money. Guys can say that. Guys can be like, I'm making bills. I'm making, b-, and it's like sexy and hot. But I think they're gross. Yep. <laughs> I think it's hot when you're doing it. I think it's awesome. I also, it's so interesting because I have historically projected a lot onto you. Please tell me everything. I, I feel horrible that I, that you is have this to. For real? This like, is what real. have you projected on? This me? is real. I projected a lot onto you because I think we kind of came to Hollywood at the same time. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? I, I came in 2015. What? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm no math elite. It's been a quick journey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever it was, mm-hmm. I remember seeing you around and being so... At the time, I mean, I was a mess. Like, I was a mess. The first time we met or saw each other or were in the same concentric mm-hmm. circles or whatever, I was such a disaster. I was like a completely unrecovered codependent, like workaholic, super insecure, mm. hanging by a thread. And I would see you, and whether this is true or not, please, I projected onto you, like, you were always so together and so calm and so clear and knew what you wanted. And I was just like, always so insecure. Is something going on? 
Are we good? Yep. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just have such a bad ADD. Yeah. I know, like, what's happening? Um, and you were always so clear and so confident, and I was jealous. Wow. When did, when, what year is this? Were you any of those things? <laughs> or did I invent them in my head? Well, it depends on what year. I don't know, 2000, you were probably doing the show by my, by now, Which your G4 show? show. So, well, it depends on when it was, uh -huh. because I could tell you, but it depends on what, in what room we might've been in. Because there were times when, when I started on G4, mm -hmm. I had no idea that that would be the, the key that would unlock, you know, Hollywood for me. Right. And so I was just on it and I, I had no real barometer for like, anything that was happening mm -hmm. and um I was just having fun and it was really fun and I was just enjoying my life and I was making money I remember you know I remember I called when I got that job on G4 I remember the first year they paid me it was uh like 80 grand mm -hmm. and I thought oh my god I'm <laughs> so rich <laughs> for <Forever>. not <laughs> forever I, I never have to work again I called my mom and I was like mom I'm done I was like can I borrow your credit card to go to Forever 21 <laughs> and buy $100 worth of clothes to celebrate? And I, with the $100 worth of clothes, I bought like 1,700 things. Yeah, I was going to say, that's 50 tube tops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, <clears throat> I was just like, every, everything was so exciting and new. And like, that first year did change. And um, and I got paid more mm -hmm. because the, the show was doing better. But um, I, if you see me during the early years of G4, I was like, had oblivious I was just oblivious I was just right. happy doing my thing yeah had no idea and then I started getting more anxiety when like I uh when I when I felt that it was like it was time like I like that the other things were coming my way other opportunities mm -hmm. I was getting offered stuff and I didn't think I was ready for it so I would turn things down I was like oh gosh I don't want to I don't want to I would turn things out to stay at G4 and then my anxiety started coming up. But like, it's so yeah. interesting that for a lot of people, they start out super insecure and then they get successful and that cures some of their self-esteem mm -hmm. issues or they look to external things to meet internal needs. They go, I have this thing. It's almost like you were super confident and then you started working a lot and the stakes got, got higher and then you started getting anxious. Yeah, well, the truth is that um, it was it was really tied to the fact that like, now I have, I'm getting offers for things and I can see where this could go. Mm -hmm. And fuck, if I'm, what if it goes away? Like I'm, I'm good right here and I'm happy here. And like, this is comfortable. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, and, you know, I'm, you know, I'm half Asian, half white and growing up as a, you know, minority female, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, kind of was ingrained somewhere in my head. It was just like, the, you know, it's stacked against me, you know, um, it's st stacked against all minorities and then minority women. And so it was just that, that idea that um, it was just going to be, it maybe it was just too much for me hmm. and I wouldn't be able to really do, I was really happy where I was. Also, I will say at the same time, around the time that I, in my head of when I started getting anxi anxiety was like 2009, right before I went out to the Daily Show with Jon Stewart, it mm -hmm. was right before then. And I, I was in a relationship with somebody. It was my first time I was ever in like tabloids or anything like that. And that was a completely new thing for me. And I that put another spotlight on me that I wasn't prepared for. Mm. And um, and having, you know, anybody talk about me online in a way that was like before when people I'd say something, I'd say something stupid or whatever. I didn't really care. And it was just like yeah. in my, you know, in the G4 nerd bubble that I felt very protected in. And I felt and I knew those people and, I, and that's how my family was. And it just felt like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, we're all kind of talking and and I would, you know, fumble around, but then all of a sudden there's this other, like the mainstream eye that- A microscope, really. Yeah, and I'm sure, like looking back, it was like nothing to other people, mm -hmm. but when it's happening to you, it really, it felt like, oh God, oh God. And for me at the time, I thought, um, it just made me feel like, okay, now I, I don't, now I have, ha now I have people thinking about me in this way and they're looking at me and like, and I think that maybe they think that like, I'm not good enough to be in the mainstream, hmm. you know, cause I was still on G4 and, um, which I loved. And all of a sudden I just felt like I wasn't like, if I had started off and like my first job was Mad Men, mm -hmm. they'd been like, oh, she's an actress and that's it. You know, but my first job was as a, as a host of this video game technology network that I loved. It's still my, like one of the most exciting times of my life. It's something I miss every day. Um, and something I'm so proud of. But at the time it felt like 
the world was like, oh, who, who is she? Yeah. Like, you're the oh, host of... Yeah, yeah you like, always wanted to be an actress, but you hosted something first. Oh, now she wants to be an actress. Yeah, it's like yeah. that I, I couldn't... Like, it was Stigma. just like I wasn't good... In, like, it was that I wasn't good enough mm -hmm. to be dating this guy that's in this mainstream world and this in that that's and whether I heard that or I just felt that I don't yeah. I can't I don't remember I don't think I actually read anything like that mm -hmm. I think that in my head that was my fear that that's how people would see me or that's what they would think or I think that there, there was probably just something like of like who the hell is she and how did she mm -hmm. get him yeah and you're kind of like well I mean because you know I'm I'm a nice person I'm the best <laughs> well just yeah. like I don't know because we met and you know you just like you think like a regular, you know, scenario. Like I met this person at this place, we connected and that's how you start dating. Yeah. Um, but instead it was this big question mark it felt like to me. Mm. And then that created this, you know, insecurity for a while. And then I have to learn how to, you know, be in these. So if you ever saw me probably looking like, like I had my shit together, it was mm -hmm. more probably me like freaking out of my head <laughs> being like, oh, I was like, cause God. now that I'm older and I look back and people say to me like, you know, I was always like, especially when I started, I was like quiet and I was like focused because I was like, okay, as a female comic, I have to work twice as hard to get half as much and everyone's going to think I'm fucking the more successful comics and there's like, everyone's always going to say you're fucking everyone if you yeah. get any success mm -hmm. and let me prove everybody wrong and I have to change. I had so much pressure on myself and then people now they're like, yeah, I met you 10 years ago and you were like very aloof and I'm like, no, I was just scared. I was scared. I was terrified. I was yeah. insecure and I was terrified. I just think it's so funny to compare notes of what you yeah. projected onto someone versus what they, when I would see you at Hollywood would parties or something mm -hmm. you were probably just like terrified and I was insecure and going like oh she's you know doesn't want to talk to me or she's so confident or with the stories we tell ourselves yeah. when we're so inside our own narcissistic fears and insecurities a hundred percent and I also think that for whatever reason there have been you know so many microaggressions that get embedded into mm. our heads and especially as women yeah um that we are naturally pitted against each other yeah you know it's like if yes. i see if you know i see you it's like it's like a dog seeing a coyote that's right <laughs> like, oh god this is gonna take me down <laughs> oh shit it's like there's a, somebody else who's doing comedy who's um mm -hmm. who's pretty and who's nice and who's smart and oh okay so then there can only be one of us always and, always and yep. i think men are raised they they're you know in a they're in team sports. That's right. You know, they, you know, I think about it a lot. We like, get like ballet. Yeah. Yeah. We try to be the soloist. But there's something also, I believe in the, the with microaggressions and, um, and actually like truly understanding like where the term microaggressions, you know, comes from and understanding what that means. You can start to, to feed back into like, into your childhood and realize like when you are raised a certain way, um, and we watch certain movies and TV shows and we read in magazines or books and we get this thing in our head that um, our goal is to basically find a husband, find a man. Yeah. Um, and that's what our worth is, um, where men have their own worth. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like so many times I think women, they I was actually talking to my girlfriend earlier today. She was saying, why is it that like I'm in these relationships and I feel like I um like I just give myself so much into them. And then when it ends, he goes off and he does whatever, but mm -hmm. I'm just left broken. And yeah. I'm like, well, because typically a lot of times women, we we put so we put our whole life mm -hmm. on hold to be in this relationship and men don't do that. No. Um, and that's a good thing. It's a healthy thing to keep things going in your life and have your friendships and your work and your hobbies. Um, so that, I always say I, relationships shouldn't come second. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but because because what are you adding to the relationship if you don't have you know, right. your own thing? But right. um, so it's it's those um it's that like i think going back into the microaggression of like so men like in in school right and this is gonna seem like a tangent but it's i know it's no, a very that, circuitous podcasts way to are a giant tangent <laughs> okay. that's the okay. good news i talk in a very circuitous way sometimes and random pausing i love it <laughs> um, but so uh like in high school um you get a girl who was at a party and she hooked up with some guy mm -hmm. and the next day um there everyone's talking about it and they're like, oh, she's a slut. She's a whore. She's like, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you see the guys are all laughing and whispering and looking at her. And then the girls, the other girls also kind of turn their back on her. That happens a lot. Nobody really yeah. um, rallies around her because it's kind of like, oh, God, everyone's talking about you. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine there's a guy and some girl takes a, like a dick pic of him and she starts to show it around to her friends. Mm -hmm. All the guys somehow know to rally around each other and be like, man, fuck that. Fuck that bitch. Yeah. Fuck her, man. Fuck. And then, every, and then the girls are looking at her going, 
well, they're mad at you now. Okay, well, we're, I can't believe you did that. That's really kind of messed up. And then mm-hmm. they turn the back. And then, so it's weird that it, when you flip it around, the girl always stands by herself, mm-hmm. no matter which way you flip it. But the guys, they, they know how to like rally around each other and stand there for each other and protect each other. And I don't know why it's not ingrained in us to do that. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's something that we have to keep working towards. And it's a really big thing is that for women, especially in our position, um, we have to keep pushing that door open, but make sure we hold it open to yeah. the people behind us. Because I, I think that. the people in front of us, they're not holding it open as much, you know, yeah. um, understandably, because it's, you know, it wasn't really held open for them. It's so interesting. And like, I think that because there's been such a scarcity complex in our business for so long, and because, you know, I think for the most part, we're, we're wired for harmony if there's not scarcity. You know, if there's only one slot, of course, it's me against you, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that, um, I also think it's important that women know that they can disagree and still be friends. That's been a really big um, uh, issue for me Mm. in writer's rooms or in any kind of organizations and charity where it's like, I disagree, I think this should happen. And then another woman can say, I disagree and I think this should happen. Go, cool, we don't have to hate each other. You're not a bitch. Mm. Like, we can get through this. Like, we can get through Mm -hmm. this uncomfortable moment. It's like, you know, I think we're so wired to not make anyone feel uncomfortable and to be apologetic that women end up being um, sort of like, categorizing a disagreement as like catty like we've internalized the sexist jargon of like she's catty she's a bitch like we sometimes do it to each other Mm -hmm. you know and I even have to check myself I'm like oh that was kind of bitchy that she did that and I'm like I would never say that if a guy did that if a guy was clear with me like that I'd be like oh he's very decisive Mm -hmm. and she sent an email that was very curt and I'm like oh she's being bitchy and I'm like what was that like I have to check my own inner monologue about that I try to just instead of correcting it I just try to call men bitchy more (laughs) Instead of saying she's decisive, I'm like, you're a bitch and you're a bitch. You're all fucking bitches. <laughs> like, you're so bitchy. Ugh. I'm like, <laughs> guys are bickering. I'm like, oh, cat fight. Yeah, right. Turn it around. Kitty likes to scratch. Oh. <laughs> Someone, it's that time of the month for Benton. Oh. <laughs> you also, like, have actually had a really big impact on me in a lot of ways because I, you know, obviously came up in comedy. And what happened with you... And the Brett Ratner situation Mm. of, and you're not cut out, whatever you want, if you don't want to talk about any of it. When I was reading back through it yesterday, so much of it was like the nasty shit he said to you, the sexist shit he said to you, the the humiliating shit he was saying to you. It's like, I learned at such an early age in this business, you laugh that shit off. You pretend it didn't happen. You come up with a witty quip to neutralize it or you Mm -hmm. go back at him. You ignore it. You know, I have learned that I have to laugh at men's nasty, I'm going to put jokes in quotes and comments and pretend like it didn't bother me and crystallize this like outer shell of armor so that their behavior doesn't hurt me instead of allowing it to hurt me and saying like, that's not okay. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what we, we are conditioned to do because <clears throat> if we say, hey, that's not okay, they get uncomfortable. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. You know, it's just a joke. And then you're like, Now okay. you're sensitive. Then you're sensitive. And you made, all, you made things uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And you're a bummer, frankly. Mm-hmm. You're being a bummer. And whatever, and you speaking up is not going to change the fact this person will, will they'll still get their job. Mm-hmm. They won't be taken down. Mm-hmm. They won't be asked to leave the party. They, everyone expects you to just deal with it. Yeah. And in fact, everyone's a little annoyed with you for making it uncomfortable. You that should have right. just learned how to, to, how to deal with it. And mm-hmm. that's why when the Me Too movement happened in 2017, I remember I was on set in Vancouver and I got to set and these guys, um, uh, all the uh, the male actors are like, oh my God, you hear about Weinstein. And I was like, what? And I, when they were telling me about it, I just thought, I couldn't believe it was actually like that there was any kind of, it felt different. I felt like there was a reckoning that was coming. It wasn't that it wasn't going to be just an article mm-hmm. and then people were going to move on. Because the thing that happened with Brett Ratner, um, the thing that was different than all the other people who've come forward in the Me Too movement is that with me, he actually admitted to, to, what he did Mm -hmm. in 2011 and um and then he had to go into howard stern and admit that he lied and say i lied about olivia munn we never dated we never fucked Mm -hmm. i'm really sorry Mm -hmm. and then um he he actually uh had some homophobic comments he made the week before he was fired as a producer of the academy awards the very next day after he went on to stern 
And then I believe, I'm doing the math right, in 2014, he got a $350 million financing deal with Warner Brothers. And all he did was put his head down, say sorry. Mm -hmm. And it's like the formula for redemption that a lot of men go use. You know, he, he put his head down, mm -hmm. he came back up, it was like, sorry, sorry. And then he aligned himself with some people that he hurt. He did some, uh, he did something with Glad, I think, some commercial for them. Right. And they go, okay, that's great because we got this big director and we're doing this and we'll, we forgive you. Mm -hmm. And then he just resumes his place in line. Mm -hmm. And no one thinks about that weekend that he had said these things about me and lied about me and how I just, all that whole weekend, I just was like, it was one of the worst weekends ever of just me just hoping and praying and just keeping my mind going of like, how can I, all I wanted was my name back. Yeah. All I wanted was for people to, to, to not think that I would have ever slept with this guy, you know, because if you look at him, it's clear that if you're sleeping with this guy, yeah. you're doing it for one reason. Yeah. Cause that's what he looks like in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And all I wanted was my name back. I, I, actually, I wasn't even hoping that he would just go away or that he would get fired or anything bad would happen. Because, like, I didn't think that I could even hope for that. I didn't even mm -hmm. think that that was, like, on the docket of, like, things you can have. I'm like, I just want my name back. Can you just not have done that to me at all? And, um, you know, I got some redemption, but then realizing on that Monday when he had to admit to it, but then realizing that it didn't really matter. So then when the Me Too movement happened, now this is, like, six years from that time that happened, which is not that much time. Yeah. And all of a sudden... People are kind of going after women for not speaking up. Oh, now you're speaking up. Oh, why didn't you say something before? Why didn't you say something before? Yeah. And I was able to say as a good, as an example to all the women, why they didn't, because look, he came after me. He said this about me. He admitted to lying about me mm -hmm. and you guys didn't do anything. So why do you think any of them would ever speak up? Yeah. Because it didn't, didn't matter when it happened to me. And at the time I was like the first female correspondent on The Daily Show um, in seven years before Samantha Bee, and then there was me. Mm -hmm. And so I was in a good place. I was in a place that women should rally around and, and be there to support, but no no, no men or women or, or animals or anybody. I was just <laughs> completely by myself, just trying to like get my name back. Mm -hmm. So why do you think any woman ever would have spoken out? Yeah. It, because nobody gave a shit. Nobody cared. And, and, and when, it's so interesting because Brett Ratner like, I look back and it breaks my heart to think about like all these men Weinstein that like when I moved to L.A. It was like the joke, like you have to fuck Harvey Weinstein. You're going to go meet Harvey Weinstein. Grab your knee pads like the level of, you know, desensitized the women that were older than me would just joke about it. Like it was they just had to cope. And it was just like, um, uh, you know, Brett Ratner, same thing. It was like, oh, he's scummy. He's this. Like, I mean, he said disgusting shit to me all the time. Came up to I, He dated people I knew and was awful with them. And it's just like, oh, that's how it is. The fact that we have had to just accept it. The mm -hmm. idea of it changing was like, so, like, didn't even cross my mind. Mm -hmm. Certainly in my lifetime that I would ever see someone like that lose power. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, this is what we do. We degrade ourselves. We allow them to say this shit. We allow them to like grab our bodies and poke us and like say nasty mm -hmm. shit. And it's just like, don't be a bummer, mm -hmm. you know? And then when I, when I do talk to people and they're like, well, why did it take so-and-so so long to come forward? It's like, can you imagine if I had wanted to say something 15 mm -hmm. years ago? Like, who am I gonna call? Who, I'm, right. I've been, I'm on two VH1 clip shows. Who, what am I going to call? You like fucking Tom from MySpace? Like, who do yeah. I know? Who am I? Like, I don't know. I don't have any power. No one yeah. cares. No one's going to listen to me. No one's going to believe me. They're not going to believe me then. They're not going to believe me now. It's just like, it's it's so interesting when someone wants to say, well, why didn't they speak up sooner? Well, they didn't have any power to speak up. Yeah. Where would they have spoken up? And I will say what's really, it's been very important for me um, as a silence breaker um, in for people who don't know what silence breaker is, it's the people who have broken the silence yeah. on um, an abuser. Um, the people that created this movement, the people that spoke out about Weinstein in the beginning that started this whole thing, um, they have been pushed out of their career. Mm -hmm. They never got their career started. Mm -hmm. um, they ha are all struggling mm -hmm. um, and um, or have decided to leave our, our business altogether because it was that traumatic for them. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't the the huge A-list stars that said Me Too afterwards. Me Too is a very important thing because it didn't leave those women alone. Yeah. But those women, 
because of their bravery to come forward and tell these stories now uh, and go to the New York Times and the LA Times and tell these stories, that's the only reason why we have this movement. And it's so important that people know who they are yeah. because they have been pushed aside um, because other big famous women um, are now, uh, you know, on the covers of magazines being called an advocate, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a huge difference <clears throat> between um, someone who advocates mm -hmm. and someone who is an advocate. That's right. Because the someone who is just an advocate, those are the people on the covers of the magazines and mm -hmm. they do not know the names. They don't know who Jessica Barth is or Carrie Kloss and mm -hmm. You know, they don't know these names. Yeah. They are advocates. You want you can be an advocate and you can advocate. Mm -hmm. But um, the problem that I've had the, that does get, that's given me the most sleepless nights is that is all of my conversations with the silence breakers. Now, I don't have that issue. Um, I, you know, because of whatever in my position that I get that credit. Mm -hmm. But um, I am not the bravest one out of all of them. You know, and and I hear that. I respect that. However, having in the last month had to make a statement mm -hmm. about someone, you know, in my <clears throat> life that um, was engaging in predatory behavior, like I have a, I mean, I, I can't, you are such a fucking gangster when it comes to this shit. It is so clear to you. Like, I remember going when all of the stuff with Predator happened. Yeah. Which the irony that that's what the movie was called mm -hmm. when um, the director hired a, a sex offender to be in a scene with you. Can you just talk to me about the um, what happened between the time you found out that you had been in a scene with a, someone who was a sex offender mm -hmm. to a 14 year old? And when that call to the studio went, like, what mm -hmm. did that look like when you made that decision to do that? So since I spoke out in 2017, um, I will be asked by different journalists from different um, news outlets uh, to talk to different women who want to come forward about someone. Uh, a lot of times these women are afraid that there's going to be repercussion or there's lawsuits. And so they want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I do a lot of those calls. And uh, truthfully, <clears throat> there's a lot of the calls where I'll, I'll say to them, like, I, I hear you and I'm really sorry that 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 happened to you. But if he wasn't famous, um, there's not a story there. Yeah. And, you know, you made a bad decision. And I'm not saying that, you know, that it's not, it doesn't suck, Yeah. but you were of age. Mm -hmm. And yes, he may be 20 or 30 years older than you, yeah. but you shouldn't go forward with this. Um, it's going to be bad for you. It's mm -hmm. going to be bad for this person mm -hmm. and it's going to be bad for the movement, but yeah. do what you want. That's my opinion. Yeah. So I do that a lot. And a lot of people don't understand the the how complicated it is to speak out against someone you're dealing with, like possible mm -hmm. lawsuits with blasphemy, defamation of character, slander. Right. Like it goes on and on and on. The how much more danger you're putting yourself in. Right. However, um, side note that people should understand, if you ever hear stories that come out in news news outlets, mm -hmm. like LA Times, New York Times, BuzzFeed, any anywhere where they're telling these, where the, when an organization is telling a story, mm -hmm. they are putting themselves on the line. That's right. So they have to vet out these stories so hardcore with their lawyers. So That's if right. you ever hear a story about this possible abuser, know that the story is 99.99999% true. Because this huge organization <clears throat> who could face a massive lawsuit is behind it. And if you haven't heard of anybody suing for defamation, mm -hmm. then know that that person is guilty. Yeah. Because if somebody was to say something about me and said that, you know, anything bad like that, I would come after them yeah. for defamation. Yes. I'm like, you can't prove this. Yes. Um, and so far, we don't have that. You know, it's it hasn't happened. Yeah. So, um, in fact, Brett Ratner did try to go after the L.A. One. Times. No, nope. oh. I was part of the L.A. Times when he went after this woman who actually told her story first on Facebook. So she wasn't protected by that. So. Right. Um, and then what happens there is it's her own money. But then she, we did get her a pro bono lawyer and they ended up uh, doing something out of court, settling something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but. Um, but other ones that you've heard of, all these big ones that you, you've heard about, um, mm -hmm. you know, no one has been sued for defamation for speaking out. So um, I will say to women, whoever, you know, I speak to, I, I listen to the story and I I just think like there's a few things like one, it doesn't matter so much if I believe it. I'm mm -hmm. just, I look for a certain facts, like who, like 
were you underage? Mm -hmm. Did they abuse their power? Mm -hmm. Did they rape you or sexually assault you in any other way? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and okay, then if it is yes to any of those, then did you... Um, tell anybody? Do you have receipts? Do mm-hmm. you can you prove this mm-hmm. beyond you just telling me the story? Mm. And if you can't prove it, you shouldn't go forward because they're probably not going to run it anyways because the the they can't. Yeah, and you are going to get um, into trouble. So and it's not going to help anybody. And I'm really really sorry. Yeah, but somebody put me on um, a call with uh, with someone who was telling me a story. And about, um, about, kind of, um, <laughs> this is my, my weird pause. This is a very long um, pause. <laughs> <laughs> I was, it was giving, it was another story. And um, what they had been um, around someone who has a lot of young girls around them. And I said, look, how old are I'm you? I'm sure I do comedy with them. Yeah. yeah. I said, how old are you? And they said, um. 18 at the time this happened and I said and they're like my friend was 19 and and um these are Canadian girls who told me that they were um they were coerced to come to parties house parties um by saying that they'll help them get their visa or help them get into the SAG union um if they would just come to these parties and it's really sleazy really gross and um horrible um I said but you were of age okay and did you work for them? No. So it's not an abuse of power. Is it creepy? A hundred percent. Is yeah. this person, I'm sure that's, you know, this person is probably doing stuff that, you know, is not okay. Mm-hmm. But with you as the source, like you can't prove it and you shouldn't go forward. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> she said, well, um, what if I know about a director who um, hangs out with a registered sex offender? And I said, well, wh- wh- what are you talking about? And they said, oh, well, this director, my director on Predator, his best friend is um, this guy who was a registered sex offender. And and she tells me his name. And I, I'm i on the phone. And then the person connecting me to this call mm-hmm. is on the phone as well because they're, like, just, you know, listening in. And I Google it. And I went, oh, my God. And then the reporter Googles it, too. And I went, oh, God. And I was like, um. And then the reporter's like, he was in your movie. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay. Um, and I said, all right, well, this is uh, another story. And I was like, well, I got to, you know, I have to get into this now. Um, but, you know, thank you for talking. Thank you for telling me that. And I don't think that they even connect. They didn't connect. They didn't know that he was in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, they think they were just kind of throwing it out there. Yeah. Like, I think they wanted to help like expose more people right so right, they're right, like well right. we know this story we know this story so um as soon as i saw that i went into a deep dive to make sure what i was seeing was correct and it was right there plain as day and uh and so then i i got off the phone called my lawyer and my manager right away mm-hmm. and i told them and this guy his his scenes were with me. Mm-hmm. His scenes were, it was the introduction to my character in the movie. Which you'd already shot. Which I'd already shot. In fact, we were just um, like five days away from me presenting at the MTV VMA Awards um, and where they're doing a big Predator promotion. So we were like super close to like, I think it was that five days. Or anyways, I know there was like five days away from yeah. picture lock. Like we're not making a documentary. Yeah. It's supposed to be fiction. Uh, yes. So we were, so we, I know that we were really close to I think, no, that was what, that was it. Cause it was on a Wednesday. I found this out. And then, um, I said, we need to tell them to delete that scene. And then my lawyer called them, told them this information. And I didn't hear anything for two days. And then on Friday, uh, I had my reps call again and say like, what's, what's going on? Because she's supposed to be at the VMAs on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And if you guys don't take this out, she's not going to promote it. And that was something really important to me because, you know, if this guy is using any kind of fame or platform in any way to seduce young girls, Mm -hmm. like he can't do it next to me. Like I just won't let, if anybody is watching that thinks that I endorse this guy, I don't. Yeah. But by, you know, because when you looked at his Instagram, he was in um, Iron Man three 
and he's always got pictures on his Instagram of that. He's got he was in the Nice Guys. He's got a picture of himself with Russell Crowe and and uh, Ryan Gosling. Mm -hmm. And so if some young girl somewhere is That's seeing right. this, they're gonna think, oh, he's somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I said, I just I won't promote the movie if you don't take it out. So they said, well, we're gonna take it out, but we can't reshoot any of her stuff because we do a picture lock in China on Monday and there's no time to shoot anything new. So I'm like, so I don't get that scene at all. They're like, no, we're just gonna jump in on your character on this other scene. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, you know, again, you just take the hit. It's mm -hmm. like, that's all right, fine. You'll, you know, as long as he's out. And then, um, and then I made sure to call my co-stars. Um, I wanted them to know all male co-stars. I wanted them to know what happened because the way I found out, I knew that I couldn't keep it under wraps for yeah. long. And I just didn't want them to be blindsided the way that I was blindsided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I told them all. And then um, it was just like, I don't know if this is going to get out. I don't know what's going to happen. But they did, you know, all the guys were really, really, you know, grateful that I called and mm -hmm. were happy to hear that the scene had been removed. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> and then I get a call from my manager and they're like, uh, so we get a call from the studio and they're like, um, why is Olivia calling for co-stars and telling them about this? Tony, OK, this is going to make me so mad. Because, like, like because, uh, what, what are we, what are you, what are you, we're not children. What are you talking about? Yeah. We have each other's phone numbers. This drives me fucking yeah. nuts. Uh -huh. okay, that's such a sexist thing. Like, look at women are spreading gossip. They're snitching. Like, what are you talking about? Well, it was actually about? a woman who called. Well, yeah, I mean. Even, which is even worse. Like, it's even worse. Yeah, too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But so that's what, what, the whole thing is so frustrating. And you're just, and he says, she says to my manager, um, she says, I need you to tell Olivia to grow the fuck up. <laughs> tell her to grow the fuck up. Help us get this movie out without causing any more waves. And when he called me and told me that, I was like, okay. my first thought was, by the way, first of all, and as I'm thinking, I'm going, oh, Olivia's the only adult in this scenario. Yeah. You're you're not the one that needs to grow up. You're That's the also, only one acting like an I'm adult. Like, I didn't put this motherfucker in the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, yeah. I helped save the fucking movie because if I didn't yeah, yeah. tell you, yeah. we'd be picture lock in China yeah. and then we'd be like opening up Toronto Film Festival in two weeks. Which, by the way, it's there's so many people whose only job it is to make sure there's no sexual predators in the movie. <laughs> well, I actually found out. I found out um, because Fox um, told us because I was wondering what happened. Apparently in the state of California, it you do not have to do a background check. It's not um, required. So... They, they were like, well, that's not our fault. Um, and, you know, and I guess, you know, you never thought that the director would put his best friend, who is this registered yeah. sex offender, into the movie. And so yeah. maybe nobody really thought that. But yeah. you, you know, but it's still there should be people's jobs to to make sure that this is, you know, because we had, yeah. we had you know, a young kid in the movie and then he has little sisters who are around and yeah. he's hanging out. And, and this guy, this particular guy, um, he did a scene with me. He was really I was really I was really uncomfortable being around him mm -hmm. in fact it was like a, a short scene like a five page scene or something and I remember um the director said that we should we should rehearse together mm -hmm. now normally you don't really need to rehearse like a, a small scene like that with somebody who's coming in for you know one, one day, day yeah um but I was like okay you know I'm, I'm always down to like want to work out the scene and, and work everything out I love you know that process and um and this guy comes over to the apartment that I was renting in Vancouver. And it was just so, he was unbelievably uncomfortable. I felt so uncomfortable being around him. He was, you know, uh, not leaving. He was there for hours and hours. And it just was so uncomfortable. But you just, you know, as you just kind of, I didn't feel unsafe, but I just felt like he was just super sleazy. But your gut knows, you know, and this is why we talk about this gift, the gift of fear on the podcast all the time about like how, you know, we are so brilliantly designed to be able to feel someone being ooky, but our brains talk ourselves out of it. Cause you're like, oh, well, this person would never be working here if they were really a bad person, or I must just be getting, being sensitive, or I'm just being dramatic. Cause that's sort of the narrative that we are conditioned to believe as women that we're, you know, overreacting and we're crazy and we're psycho. But um, in The Gift of Fear, um, there are these interviews with women that were attacked mm -hmm. uh, by men in, you know, parking lots and in apartment buildings and stuff like that. And they always say, I knew there was something weird about that guy. I fucking knew it. And I talked myself out of it because he offered to help my uh, carry my groceries and open the door for me. And I was like, stop being so crazy. Mm -hmm. He's super nice. You're being dramatic. You're being paranoid. And they were always right. 
Um, I had a male therapist um, say once that I thought was, it, it really changed things in my head to understand it and hear it. He said, women do have um, another sense <laughs> that men don't have. He's like, and that's just because we've had to cultivate it and 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 use it our whole life. He's like, so as long as we were on this earth and we're, you know, these little kids, there's always been an entire group of people who are bigger than us. Yeah. So when we're playing around on the playground and some boy runs by us, we have to think, okay, he's running towards us. We got to brace ourselves where mm -hmm. he runs to another boy. He's strong enough to kind of hold himself and not fall over or fall, you know, fall down. Um, we get older, like say we're 13 years old and we're walking down a dark alley. Mm -hmm. Um, we, our senses come up. Mm -hmm. We have to look at everything that's around us. But you have a 13 year old boy, he's going to just innately, because he's grown up feeling stronger mm -hmm. that he's going to, he can, that, or been told he was stronger, yeah. you know? But he also, but they physically are, you know, they grow up being bigger than us for a certain point. Then there's a point where we kind of get bigger than them for a little bit. But they, but they, they are just, they don't have that fear mm -hmm. put into them. That's actually a great thing for us mm -hmm. to know. So when they go through that dark alley, they just kind of walk through. They don't think anything of it. But for us, our spidey senses come on mm -hmm. and we've had to cultivate that. And so that's a really great thing. So we just have to learn as women that we have this ability and to, to really tune into it. Superpower. And to not have mm -hmm. to be shamed about it or stigmatized about it or pathologize it. You know, it's like, for me, I was talking to somebody uh, the other day about, you know, we're in a pandemic and people are trying to tour and et cetera. And there was someone that I know that was asked to go on a tour and she just felt weird about it. And mm -hmm. she was just like, it doesn't feel like it's safe yet. And it's like, that's all. You don't have to explain why. Mm -hmm. Just the answer is no. I'm really big on saying no to something. I'm not sure why yet. I can't articulate it. My gut, my inner child, whatever you want to call it, my spidey sense, is telling me the answer is no. I can rationalize why I should. I can talk myself out of it. But the answer is no, and I'll explain why later, mm -hmm. or my gut should be enough of a reason why. That's right. enough evidence for me. Just mm -hmm. my, bo my body gets to make decisions now instead of my brain, because yeah. my brain will always talk myself out of <laughs> yeah. any of my emotions, and I can, you know, be cerebral and talk myself in and out of, you know, bad situations. But my big thing now is just like, no. The answer is no. My body just said yeah. no. I don't even ask my brain anymore. Well, it's important. You know, you, the brain is important because, you know, the brain supports the heart mm -hmm. and the gut and the gut supports the brain. You know, like they, they work together. And sometimes, you know, I think people, you know, you, we can get into a feeling of nobody wants me to be afraid or nobody wants me to say no. So mm -hmm. I'm going to. So we have to kind of really learn to 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 decipher what's going on. And we have to understand that our brain is there to support the rest of our body, too. It's not, you know it's it's not just a one-way street you know you can't just only trust your gut you know i think it's important that because because what happens after a while is we get conditioned to think nobody wants to hear us we can't mm -hmm. say no we can't say that's but, right but you know like for me i do think about these things a lot probably like more than i i should and i do think about that's probably why i pause when i talk i do <laughs> I think that i do think about these types of things a lot i think about um so when they when they happen like when this happened with with the predator um, it was like, it, it was just, a, it was, it was, a the way it all went down, the way it was handled was like hard. It was really hard for me. And, um, but I wasn't, it, it was really hard, but I didn't feel blindsided because I'd already, I've already thought so much in my head about how, how our voice is interpreted by other people, how mm. our actions are interpreted by other people, men and women, yeah. um, how it is being a woman, how it is being a minority woman, how, it, you know, it's, there's all of those things that like I've already thought. So when it's happening, I just kind of, I, you know, I braced myself and, and was ready to kind of like lose everything for, for what I believed was the, the right thing you know you have to I truly believe and I do act on this I, I do the right thing no matter what that is can I tell you me. something that is exactly who the fuck you are <laughs> and it is so clear and it is so badass and I I really when I went through something over the last month like I very much felt myself like I thought about you a lot I channeled mm -hmm. you a lot because when the predator stuff happened I went and watched an interview you gave somewhere I was like trying to figure out what was going on mm -hmm. it was like in the new and and you were it was clear you were stressed yeah. in the interview because I know you and I know enough to know that your energy is effervescent and you're playful and you're buoyant and you were I just remember you were like and I know the press junket circuit like I could tell you were tired <laughs> and you were tired of fucking talking about it and you were that your castmates were not supporting you publicly or you know and you just went 
<laughs> someone's like, why did you do this? And you're like, it's very clear. If someone harms children or animals, I'm going to do something about it. Yeah. Like you just, it was like, what you literally were like, why, are you, what are we talking about? Yeah. It's like the fact that it's, you know, and you're an outlier for doing this. Yeah. That's the conversation. That's what's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's what's newsworthy. Yeah. And you found, I was watching you and you were like, why am I having to explain myself? Someone hurt a child. What, like, yeah. what, of course I'm going to do this. To you, it's so obvious. Yeah. What the it right is. decision is. It, it, yeah. I mean, it just, that's, you know, that's how my mom raised us. And that's just how I am. And, you know, and at the end of the day, like, the fear of speaking up. Mm -hmm. um, what could I lose? Mm -hmm. I could lose my career. Yeah. I could lose um, any kind of income. Um, I could lose any kind of status I've created or any kind of um, cultural currency. Mm -hmm. They could just take it all away in, in some way. Um, and I could have nothing. Yeah. Um, but the things that I do value, truly value, my, my family, my family's love, their respect for me, my friends, my education, my sense of self, my self-worth, mm -hmm. that's not on the table. No one can ever take that away. So once I, I, you know, able to, to understand what that is, mm -hmm. which was, you know, years ago and I'm, I realized this is, this is what's important to mm -hmm. me, then nothing's really scary. Yeah. It doesn't mean that that wasn't really hard. And mm -hmm. I didn't go, you know, during that press junket, you know, when I was in the Toronto Film Festival every night, I'd go home and cry in the hotel room and have to like, you know, wash my face in the morning and, and, and do it again, because I knew that it was important for me to, like when I did those interviews, it was important for me to be collected, mm -hmm. um, to not be angry, to not be emotional, but to, to give out the information um, and to answer the questions clearly, because I wanted people to understand why it was important to, that I was speaking up, why I wasn't creating a mess and I wasn't being dramatic, why mm -hmm. this is just very simple, but also I wanted other people to be able to see that and, um, and say, like, oh, you, you can speak out without without ruining yourself. That's it, right. And without unraveling yeah. and the, the, the message is not going to get lost in the delivery of the message. I'm realizing I have so much anger coming up about this, like, because it's like, not only do we have to be the victims of this, we also have to fix it and we have to speak out about it. And then we have to like speak out about it in the perfect way. And mm -hmm. we have to be composed and we can't be too emotional and we can't be too upset. You know, when this happened, you know, with, uh, Chris D'Elia, it was like, it happened as if the devastation wasn't enough, then it's like the pressure to say something. And then if I said something too soon, it would be I didn't say the right thing or it's def it comes off defensive or it was like just the mental gymnastics, the six, it was literally like six days straight of trying to figure out how to digest everything into five sentences so people could actually hear it the way it was intended and not filter it through there. And I realized something that I got to the point where I was like, you know what? You either fuck with me or you don't. Right. And there is no way that me being the person I've al consistently always been in this moment, I'm not going to lose you or gain you. And if I lose you, I never had you and you never fucked with mm -hmm. me. If you think this is a controversial statement, mm -hmm. we don't fuck with each other. And like, that's fine. And I, I got so much thrown at me after that. And there was such a crazy amount of negativity that came at mm -hmm. me. And I was like, no, you guys never fucked with me. Mm -hmm. That negativity was always there. You never liked me for mm -hmm. whatever reason. I'm a loudmouth female comic. We're the most hated people on the planet. Like, you ne I didn't lose anyone, you know? Right. And I think that anyone you do lose when you're being your authentic self, like, either I've been fake this whole time yeah. and I'm growing and changing, or you just never knew me. Well, that's, you know, um, I, you know, one, I will say this. You know, you and I were texting a lot during that. Yeah. And I... Um, when you, I was not sure, you know, I, I wanted to be there to be a support for you, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's, what's your statement going to be? And your statement was as pretty close to fucking flawless in my opinion. Oh, that's very nice. And, and it, it, it was, and I know how hard that is, you know, and I think if I remember correctly telling you, like, you know, just take your time because whatever you say, it's going to, you know, they, people can wait for that. You, you really helped me not pull the trigger too soon mm -hmm. because I did feel this sense of urgency to say something. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, you know, mean what you say, say what you mean, don't say it mean and wait for the urgency to lift right. so that you can be clear and rational. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like in moments like that, I feel this pressure of like, 
Don't be dramatic. Don't be crazy. People already think women are emotional. You have to sound objective. You have to be composed. You have to be mature. You have to be clear. It's like, yeah. And by the way, you, like I know that that's frustrating for for us to have to think like that. Mm -hmm. But that's OK. Yeah. And we're not going to change the fact that we have to think about all those things before we make a statement. That's just how the world is yeah. right now. And there are, you know, there are some people that in my belief, I feel like there are some people who are meant to weather a storm and to get through to the other side. And then I believe that there are other people who are meant to turn around, walk right back into the rain and change the entire course of the storm. Yeah. And I think that's somebody like you. You know, it's, you can make it through and get to the other side and put your head down. And that's fine, too. Like, there's some people that just aren't built for the controversy or to actually understand how it is to to change a storm. And sometimes you get in there and you can't fucking change it. Yeah. And it's and it's all that energy for nothing. But if you have the ability to and if you have the the intelligence to and the strength to and the support system to, then you got to turn around and you and 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 go right back in. And try to change it because there are other people right behind you that you mm -hmm. have to change it for. That's right. And if it, you know, it's not just for you, it's for everyone else. And so when you do that, when you did what you did, you had to take that time. You had to take that time because, you know, the people will forget how much time it took you unless yeah. you took like months, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they will always remember what you said. You told and, me that. And people will, they'll, and what, what you said was, it was like I said, when I saw it, I was like, that's fucking flawless. On an, you know, another one, and not to put him on, not to put her on blast, but enough time has gone by. And I think it's an important um, thing to understand, um, especially speaking about like what you did. But like back when Lena Dunham def defended her, um, the writer that was called out, right? Um, I saw that and immediately texted her. And I said, because, um, I didn't want to go onto Twitter and t respond back. I will go directly to the person. And I said, hey, like, I really respect how you want to stand up for your friend and somebody who wrote for you. And um, but I would encourage you to put out um, to delete that statement, to put out another statement, because your experience with him mm -hmm. cannot be compared to others. Yeah. And where you are right now in your career and the platform that you have, you are risking opening a door for other people to defend simply based on their own experience. Mm. And I think you should put out another statement. And she responds right back and she said, you know, oh my God, you're so right. I'll, I'll, I'll get onto it. She did that actually the next day. There was too much time and she got, you know, an onslaught of like mm -hmm. of that, of like, what the hell? Basically what I'd, you know, what the, pro what I saw was a problem, which mm -hmm. is you can't say that this, you know, if somebody has gone forward to the, you know, you, at, at this moment in the movement mm -hmm. that we were in, the Me Too movement, let that work itself out. And um, and you saying, well, because I, as his boss, he never did that to me. Yeah, that's right. Like, that's not going to work. And um, and then the next day she did put out a statement that pretty much said, you know, that. You're making me realize something that, you know, it, it's I think that as um, women in this business, you're treated like shit for so long. <laughs> <laughs> that uh -huh. by the time you're in a position of power, you might not even know you're in a position of power. And it took me a while to catch up. Mm -hmm. You know, it took me a while to realize, like, what do you mean? But these guys I work with are so nice to me. Mm -hmm. Like, they, and it's like, no, there's people below you that they can treat like shit. It's like, oh, there's people below me? I thought I was the <laughs> lowest. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you have to understand, you have to, part of our responsibility as women, you know, is to update our software as we evolve and grow and succeed and realize like if you do have power you have to take responsibility for right. that you know because I think as women we're so trainably we're powerless mm -hmm. you know that it took me a while to catch up and go like oh yeah my experience with this person isn't necessarily everybody's experience right. even though my dysmorphia is not an excuse mm. to not know what the fuck is going on it's interesting I that's an, I mean, I think that's definitely something that people and women need to work on. I don't think I've ever, um, I, if anyone has ever in my life been like, this guy's an asshole mm -hmm. or this girl's a bitch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and they're really nice to me. I never, I never think, oh, I don't believe that. I, I, I think I've, for whatever in my life, I think I've seen enough to be like, yeah, yeah that tracks. <laughs> or, or, or be like, yeah. I don't, you know what? 
I've never seen that in that person, mm-hmm. but I can't discount that because I know that people have so many sides to them. Yeah. And I can't, I, there's no, I would never discount what somebody else tells me. Yeah. Um, ever because I can't, you know, there's a few people that I would be like, that's, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. Don't, but, um, but like in general, like everybody has so many different sides mm. and, um, you know, it's also important, this is not the same in the same realm, but it's a little bit of a tangent, but my friend Bao Win, he directed the Bruce Lee documentary that's on 30 for 30. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, and he was asked a lot um, about uh, the controversy with Tarantino um, representing Bruce Lee in, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right. Because Shannon Lee, Bruce's daughter, who runs the Bruce Lee legacy, um, was really upset by the representation of Bruce in the movie and she petitioned to have him change it or delete it and she actually petitioned and successfully petitioned in China for him to not have the movie shown there at all because China said take out that scene of Bruce Lee or you can't have the movie here at all so he chose not to delete the scene um and uh you know Bao and I were talking about it and I and I was asked a little bit about it um never publicly really I think just like on Instagram kind of thing but um you know at first he said that you know Bao was like I don't you know He's trying to be respectful of an artist, like, you know, allow, allow Quentin Tarantino to be the artist and to do whatever he is he wants to do, because we can't start to micromanage what artists are putting out. I said, however, you know, uh, Tarantino did say that he researched by talking to people who were around Bruce Lee at the time, because he tried to make it as accurate um, of a portrayal as he could. So he spoke to people who were around Bruce Lee at the time, acquaintances or people on the studio sets or whatever, and they all said that he was this guy that was arrogant and cocky and all these things. And so just based on that, so now we're no longer talking about artistry. We're not talking about somebody's own depiction of it. Tarantino himself said, uh, I tried to make it as believable as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that he was trying to make that as believable as possible. I think that he was trying to make an authentic portrayal of Bruce Lee and by asking people, but I think the one thing that he didn't know to put into the equation was if you're asking a lot of these these white men who at the time you know chinese people were pushed away and we were not paid the same and we were building all the railroads before that and you know if all of a sudden you see a a chinese man with confidence you're going to think that that's cocky you're going to think that he was egotistical and so you have to put into the equation when you have a memory of somebody like, I remember this guy, he was so cocky. So, yeah, but it's also because I was conditioned at the time mm-hmm. that Chinese men should not be mm-hmm. um, confident and they should not feel like they, they can speak out to any white person out here. So, you know, not really that it's like, there's a difference, to, I think sometimes with like the racism and those microaggressions that are put into people's heads. And they, you have to, you always have to put into equation how people are seeing it and viewing it. Mm-hmm. So like when we are talking about the stuff with, um, with like, you know, how you see things or how somebody else is seeing things. We have to understand, like, as a female comedian, you're like, well, a lot of times these people aren't, don't, you you know, it's so much harder, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it's like, they, they, you have to almost kind of do the reverse math of it. Like, why are they, like, because they don't, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's a conscious decision to be like, like, fuck you, Whitney Cummings. But it's like, okay, let's reverse engineer it and and try to understand, like, why are you seeing it this way? Mm -hmm. And then how can we get them to understand, oh, yeah, I guess I am kind of doing that right now. Mm. I think that's what people are trying to, is with the BLM movement, people are trying to, you know, to say, like, you know, you've been doing this. Really unpack this, this, like, subconscious shit. Like, I remember when the Constance Wu stuff came out of, Mm -hmm. people were trying to call her a diva and stuff. A friend of mine who's Asian was like, oh, that's progress that someone would think an Asian woman's a diva. (laughs) Because that means she's not being, you know, stereotypically silent. Like, that, you know, Mm -hmm. she was joking, but it was an interesting, like, oh, yeah, we're so conditioned to believe that Asian women are quiet or something mm-hmm. or that Asian men aren't, uh, you know, sexy and hot. And that's right. You know, it's, but that's because of the microaggressions that are in, you know, film and TV for so long. And so it's, it's like, once you have, once you understand wh- how it was, it's like, if you have like mold at your house, right. <laughs> and you're like, I got mold. And then you're like, okay, you can take the mold out, but there was a leak somewhere. You got to go figure out where that leak is. That's right. creating all of this. So we've got to like, you know, fix the leak. And then, you know, and repair all the drywall and then we can live in this house again. But until you fix that leak, it's going to get you can take the mold out all you want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that leak is going to bring more mold. So you have to 
like understand the genesis of it. You are one of the few people in this business that I'm like, that bitch is not doing it for clout. She is not doing mm -hmm. it for likes. Like she walks the walk when no one is looking. Well, thanks. It and it is it is so rare. Have I not said that, Benton? She has said that. Oh, thanks, Benton. You have to yeah. hit the microphone so loudly when you grab <laughs> yeah. it. I want a you to know that I'm here. ASMR <laughs> nightmare. Um, I know I can't keep you too much longer, but I love you. You can brain. talk for longer. How long are our podcasts allowed to be? I mean, Rogan's goes like three hours. But I'm gonna have to stop and pee if we keep. I going. have to pee so okay, bad. Okay, do you want to pee? Yeah, okay, can we pee and you come back? pee. Okay, let's Wait, both ben, pee. You guys talk. Okay, yourselves. Benton, you take over. Okay, guys. <laughs> you take over. You do because we're not supposed to edit it. The people don't like an edit. And get, no, you're not. She told me we're not editing this. You guys, get on, get on the mic. Go out be interesting. That way you pee, and I'm gonna use this crappy okay. bathroom. Okay, we're taking a little break from talking to Olivia, and we're gonna talk to you about my favorite product that makes me feel like a loved wife. Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Number one meal kit in America. We only mess with number ones. Yes, number one only. Hello Fresh, it's awesome. It's a delivery meal service that basically delivers you fresh food right to your door. I don't know if Benton is allowed to uh, talk about this sponsor since he can't pronounce the word meal. <laughs> yes, it's a I can. Meal kit. It's a meal kit. It's a what? A meal kit. A what? <laughs> it's not. They're gonna think it's a mail company. It's, it's a, a meal kit. Meal kit. Delicious, fun, easy, affordable meals, as Benton calls <laughs> meals. them. Meals. I've been making a lot of the wasabi zinger salmon. I'm a no, dude. I don't even I'm know what a zinger is. Obsessed with this company. They just send you a box of ingredients, and then you can just make it yourself. And Pretty it makes portioned. makes me feel like a magician. Yeah. Makes me feel like a like um. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm ready to take Rachel Ways, Rachel Ray's Rachel Ray <laughs> spot any moment. Rachel Ray's meals. <laughs> uh, there's something for everyone: low calorie, vegetarian, family friendly recipes every week. I do. I'm addicted to the one that is just it's salmon asparagus and how do you pronounce it? Belnis sauce. Belnis. Dude, there's one that is squash. Gratin, is that how you pronounce yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah. It's, little it's so bits good. Of, oh my god, I'm like completely obsessed. Also, with it. the mushroom ravioli stuff. Oh, you can't. I know. Benta keeps talking about the mushroom I'm ravioli. I haven't had that one. It's so easy to make. It's so fast. Uh, great news! Contactless delivery at HelloFresh, so that you don't have to worry. Very safe. Or be panicked. It's also nice to not have to go to the grocery store right now. I know that causes a lot of anxiety for people. At least, certainly. Around where I live, you have to wait in line and you have to put on a mask. And also, you can save 28% by using HelloFresh opposed to like grocery store shopping. Because when I go when I go shopping myself, I overbuy and then it goes bad. That is true. That is, <laughs> that is <laughs> very true. So this only gives you the ingredients you need so you don't have like food going bad. HelloFresh's carbon footprint is also 25% lower than store-bought grocery That makes me meals. feel good because I feel like my carbon footprint has been pretty sloppy lately. So it makes me feel good that I'm using less yeah. of a carbon footprint. Uh, the packaging to ship your food is enti almost entirely made from recyclable and or recycled content. Which is... Thoughtful. Fantastic. Thoughtful, frankly. I don't have to feel guilty. I'm not as worried about the sea turtles. I also love the fact that you can add to your order. So you can add extra proteins. You can add oh, yeah. cookies. You like can add garlic it. bread. Yeah. Stop it. Ugh, I just want deliveries of garlic bread. Pretty yeah, much. Honestly, is there an option for that? All day. <laughs> just a box of garlic bread. <laughs> HelloFresh is committed to making fresh, delicious food available now more than ever and has taken extra steps to keep its employees and customers safe. HelloFresh donated over 2.5 million mills to charity in 2019. That's awesome. And this year is stepping it up uh, with their food donations amid the coronavirus crisis. Thank you, guys. That's super cool. Go to HelloFresh.com slash GoodForYou80 and use the code GoodForYou80 to get a total of $80 Dude, we're off. giving you $80, basically. <laughs> Including free shipping on your first box. That's HelloFresh.com slash GoodForYou80 mm -hmm. and use code Good for you, 80, to get a total of $80 off, including free shipping on your first you box. You guys, this is such a good way now that we can't really go on a lot of dates during the pandemic to look like you know how to cook. I'm just, yeah. I'm just. Make believe you're on a date. It's a life hack. Invite him over for dinner, order some Hello Fre Hello Fresh. <laughs> Hello Fresh. Hello! <laughs> so order some Hello Fresh and look like you're. Uh, Seasoned we chef. We messed up so many words in this ad. I know. <laughs> Meals, Rachel Ray. Meals, Rachel Ray. <laughs> Additional restrictions apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. I'll fix it. So, you know that I really want to learn a new language. Me too. I'm so sick of English. 
It's, it's embarrassing. It's so one I know. It's so embarrassing, and I hardly know it. <laughs> Me too. I'm struggling. <laughs> Does Babel teach English? Because I do no. think we should retake it. I'm tired of getting all my dialect lessons from reruns of Love Island. <laughs> I decided that I'm going to use Babbel to learn Swedish <sighs> because I want to go to Sweden, and it's the most fun language ever. You know I want to learn that too. You know how to say yes. Ja? Ja. Ja. It's the closest to furbish, so that's why I want to learn it. <laughs> furbish? But furby speak. Bra bra? No, wait. Bra. <laughs> See? No. Bara bra. That means how are you? Bara bra. I'm good. Ja? Ja, I'm good. <laughs> ja, very like, it's good. It's such a fun language. <laughs> it is. You, you Here, seem really this happy one? saying remember it. Remember this one? Hermardu? Hermardu. That's how are you, but you're with joy, right? No, that's where is Gerard Depardieu? <laughs> <laughs> in Swedish. <laughs> what? I just want to learn Swedish so I can get a date with Alexander Sarsgaard. That's the real reason to get Babbel. Babbel is this amazing uh, uh, company, and I just was on their website today. You can pick how many, like what increments of time you want to study in mm -hmm. every day, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. And it is proven to get you speaking a language within weeks. They design their courses with real world conversations in mind, letting you learn everyday practical conversations. I remember when I learned French in high school, it was so useless because they don't teach you conversation. They just teach you words. Yeah. You're just like, Zuta la la. Yeah, I and then, just say la bufanda. Yeah. And then you actually go talk to a French person. They're like, that's not French. Those are just <laughs> right. Croque monsieur. Yeah. They're like, we don't eat those anymore. That's like from the 20s. Uh, so these lessons are thoughtfully created by over 100 language experts and their teaching methods been scientifically proven to be effective across multiple studies. Choose from 14 different languages, Spanish, French, Italian, German, or in my case, Swedish. <laughs> ja? Babel is available you as, to you as an app online. God Morgan. God Morgan? That's good morning. Who is she? That's <laughs> That's good morning in Swedish. God Morgan. God Morgan. God Morgan. I think that we are putting like a German. Yeah, yeah I am definitely doing a German accent. We are not the instructors of Babbel. Thank FYI. God. <laughs> right now, when you purchase a three month subscription, Babbel will give our listeners three additional months for free. That's cool. With promo code good for you. Jaw? <laughs> Jaw for you! Jaw for ja you! For you. <laughs> That's three additional. How embarrassing. That's three additional months free if you go to babbel.com and use promo code Ja, ja for, for you. you. No, for you're you. going to confuse good people. Good for you. G O D F O R Y O U. On your three month subscription. <laughs> That's babbel, B A B B E L dot com, promo code good for you. How do you like, say as a woman that you have to go tinkle? Like, what do we ew, even say? I don't, what is. <laughs> That's I, worse than the yogurt on the tuner of the stereo. <laughs> I have to go take a piss. Like I don't even know what I say. I, I say think, pee. I say we use, said it. I have to go use the restroom. But sometimes oh, I yeah. worry people think I'm saying take a <laughs> shit. Like I'm not gonna take a shit. I'm just gonna go do number one in the restroom. What do we, What do we say? I'm just gonna take a pee. I'm gonna go take a pee. No, I'm gonna pop a squat. When I hear gonna have a pee. When I hear pee, I picture your vagina peeing. Is that not what you happens? do? Yeah. When pee, like I just think of pee. I don't think. That's a now lot. you're thinking it. <laughs> I'm thinking about what your vagina looks like. I'm wondering if it's lasered. It's very lasered. It is yeah. bald. It is like a yeah. dolphin. Yeah. Did you got? We'll get three guys in here. Yeah. Well, um, do you, have you ever had sex with a woman? No. <laughs> Sorry. Some of my gay friends have. Innocent question. Um, Benton, we'll have sex later. But I found out that there are. There are four things that guys think about. The four top things when Tell it comes me. to... Um, well, you can guess. I'll let you guess. T about what? About the vagina. It's really far back. What? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like guys are constantly surprised by how... What? <laughs> where did, where they just sticking it like in your belly button? I'm just, I'm just saying, I think... I think they think that it's where the penis is, which is up here. That's right. Like, I'm, really, the vagina I'm is constantly... Like back here. How far back the vagina hole is? What? <laughs> I, hold on, <laughs> Whitney. What? My, I'm just saying it's. I, I'm just saying. I think it's a common, common uh, plot twist that the vagina is way further back than maybe you would think. 
Yeah, that makes sense, Whitney. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of people oh. think that Benton, you can't be part of you this conversation. I've seen many a vagina. <laughs> but have you tried to put your penis into one? I think it I think that our bodies were made that it goes like that. I feel like guys always put their penis like in the front of the vagina and then just like <laughs> push it in. <laughs> you have to like thumb it in. What? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> guys, guys, like stop I looking at your phones and <laughs> like you don't hear us. Is she saying something that is accurate to your experience? I, I'm getting a no. No. Okay. You've never had okay. a girl. You, so you've never had a girl thumb your penis into her vagina. Well, who would admit to that? I'm just saying. I feel like it's always further back than it seems. I even sometimes when I put a tampon on it, I'm like, whoa, that's so much further back than I thought it was gonna be. Whitney, I, I, <laughs> is my vagina deformed? <laughs> Whitney, it's it's not deformed. It's just really far back. <laughs> is your is your butthole on your back? I was gonna say, <laughs> is everything just kind of rotated? My vagina you know and may, butthole are very close. You that's just need a good chiropractor to get your alignment <laughs> back. <laughs> you just need to rotate it, rotate it. <laughs> Oh my God, Whitney! I okay. So your vagina is very far forward. No, no, no. Tell. My vagina is in a normal vagina place. <laughs> my vagina, vagina is like right where it should be. I ride horses. Maybe it's been pushed back. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I have some I kind think of you injury. Do you do. You have like a misalignment in your like <laughs> your T one five eight yes. whatever spinal. Well, okay. Okay. So, so the, <laughs> let's. I want you to give me four. So one is that. Hold on, I'm actually really now sort of upset. No, your vagina is in a normal place. Don't you think? It's very. You've normal. seen my Benton. vagina a lot. Benton's seen my vagina a lot. But have you seen the hole? Have you got in there? Like, like, uh, I don't think so. No, I mean, you've seen the top of her vagina, which is enough. where he thinks the the hole is. Sometimes when I see my friends' vaginas, I'm like, my vagina doesn't look like that. <laughs> what do your friends? You mean <laughs> in a good way? Very. Wait, hold on. In a good way or a bad way? In a like, in a way, you're like, thank God. What? No, one time I saw a friend of mine's vagina that was like, oh, I want that one. It was like had no. It was like like. It was. Just, it was <laughs> Wait, what was it? Was, it was like it was like. It was like like a tiny little um like a U shape with just a line in it, and that was it. <laughs> There was no like I've I would got, say your vagina is ten out of ten. It's a very nice vagina. As thank you, I appreciate. Describe that. it. I mean, <laughs> I can, I take your it. time, but draw I, it. I have like a labia, but coming out. Do you know what I mean? Barely. Really? <clears throat> yeah. But it's it hides when you come close. <laughs> <laughs> it, it recoils up into my body. I think that's intentional so that you can't <gasps> sue oh me. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like a turtle head. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, sure. it's like yeah. a, a roly poly that just sort just of like rolls up. up. <laughs> I like that. That just the labia being hidden keeps you from being sued. Like just that one thing. <laughs> 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 so okay, you were asking me the four things that guys think about that vaginas. I have been told that guys think about vaginas. Okay. Uh, Yours was it's not as far back. <laughs> yeah, that's that, one. That, I just learned a lot. Um, the size. We all that. learned a lot. Uh, I mean, <laughs> too much, frankly. Uh, okay, the four things people think about vaginas. No, people, guys. Guys. <laughs> Not people, guys. <laughs> Very similar. <laughs> <laughs> that they e, are. Size, right? Size has to be one of them. That they, I, oh, that they stretch. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. I'm so proud of my <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say stretch. They don't stretch. Like I'd say the opposite stretch, how tight it is. What oh, is a, wrong with you? Wait, 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 wait. What's the game? <laughs> <laughs> the game is I have been told by guy guy friends uh -huh. there are four things that well, I deduce them. They're like, these are the things that the top things off the top of their head. They're that, like, when they think about when they're when they're with a girl for the first time sexually and they with her vagina. What are the four things? I thought the four things that surprised them. And I was like, well, how tight it is. I don't think guys have ever been surprised by that with me. <laughs> but congratulations. <laughs> I see. Okay, so the four things they think about. Tightness, <laughs> baldness. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. <laughs> what did you think it was? Like things that surprise them about like, the vagina. How much yours stretches out? <laughs> Holy crap! Oh my god! No, no, like, they're no, like no, no, no. Whitney. No, no, no. no. Ben, like, have you seen? Have you no. swam? Some are still lost in there. We have to go find them. There is a common misconception that women's vaginas can like stretch if they like date a guy with a big dick. Her vagina is gonna be like bigger. No, the average vagina depth is seven inches. 
<laughs> I wanted to be a neonatal surgeon so bad. <laughs> Benton was almost a neonatal surgeon. Well, you work with me now, so similar. You deal with baby, childish, <laughs> naked people in bathtubs a lot. <laughs> Okay, let's hear it. Okay, so the four things that guys like think about when they the basis of the checklist for a great vagina. Okay, okay, now I understand the game. Bald, <laughs> <laughs> tiny, like wet squirter. <laughs> <laughs> I do not squirt, so uh, fuck all y'all hydrated bitches out there. Uh huh. <laughs> and is a butthole. What? <laughs> I mean, they'd rather go for your butthole. Oh, it's um, lasered, mm -hmm. tightness, mm -hmm. wetness, <laughs> <laughs> and temperature. Girls' vaginas um, are different. Some of them are a lot hotter. Mine's apparently very hot, like, like a jacuzzi. Because this, because they're like this. When you get into a hot, this is explain. Now to I me. have to worry about the temperature of my vagina. Well, I worry about you don't have to worry about it because it just is that way or not. It's your, it's your body. So he, and then the way it's explained to me is like, so like, you want it. The guys, you want it to be hotter because it's like if you go into a, like a hot, like a, a pool, you want it to. If it's room temperature, you're like okay. But if you go into something that's hot, it feels really good. <clears throat> hotter is better. Yeah, because yeah, it feels like it's hotter. It's like it's like the, the way it's described to me. It's like a hot pocket. <laughs> like you don't want to put you he put he puts his dick into something that's like room temp or his his dick temp his dick yeah. temp. It's like okay, but, but it's like warm and hot. But I don't want guys, your, I don't want guys. <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> is, is, Temperature is a thing, right? What you're saying sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> I would never want. I don't think about the temperature of dicks. Do you? I uh, know because I think they're inserting it, so it's different. But I guess I've never had a cold My dick. <laughs> wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't, wouldn't that My be something? My vagina is not particularly like warm and welcoming. <laughs> I don't think. I think it's it's lukewarm uh, <clears throat> and uh, kind of um, harsh conditions. <laughs> Not particularly welcoming emotionally or otherwise. Okay. Yeah. Treacherous. So it's terrain. like it's like. <laughs> It's like parts of Canada. Yeah, like it is like Winnipeg. My vagina is like the Winnipeg <laughs> of vaginas. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's mine's like Turks and Caicos. <laughs> you know, I bet. <laughs> I actually bet. Are you fully lasered? Fully lasered. I'm like a, just like pretty much from armpits down. Me too. Yeah, I don't know why more girlfriends don't do. In fact, after I told my girlfriend, my my best friend, this story, yeah, she went the next day started lasering everything off. I but I got laser before they came up with the new one that didn't hurt. I did oh. the one that was little flames, like zink. zink. Yeah, I. Did did that when you had to do the um back you had to they gave you this the numbing cream you took you put on the night before I, I and remember you put the saran wrap on top of I it remember, and, you come, I remember. and you come to the doctor's office with your vagina like saran wrapped and um yeah and I then it didn't still flashbacks. hurt and it still really hurt now but then I had to do like I only did a certain certain amount of rounds because it was so painful so painful but then I went and now they have like the really good one where they do the cool blast that's too. right that's right and it's amazing. They and now so, see we are old enough to remember when you got laser and it was just fire. They would just set your vagina on fire, mm -hmm. and now they have the, they just invented this little thing. It's like cold, hot, cold, hot, and you can barely feel it. And I'm just gonna say this: I suggest lasering for girls, not for the guys. It's just it's just nice. It's, it's just nice. You don't have to deal with like ingrown hair issues. You don't ever have. It's just nice. Like my right. like my leg hair. It's that's just right. nice. Me too. I just love it. I still though get hairs on my toes and mm -hmm. I, I didn't think to get my toes laser you it, didn't no it annoys me because then i have to shave my stupid toes well go get a little <laughs> like a little shot it feels stupid <laughs> a little, it feels stupid little, to go to just like can i get -uh. my toes they'd laser? they'd be like okay they'd get it they'd be like yeah <laughs> like fair enough yeah are I, they right now i do get no i probably i get like hairs around my ankles and you do have toes. to do spot treatment you know like they go, go in they go Get a couple spots. I know. I think I shaved them already. See, that's a cut from shaving my toe. Oh, but I see some. I, I see the hair. Stupid. I see Do you some, know what I mean? Yeah, there's some couple. Isn't hair that ones. stupid? And guys are into sucking toes. I'm not into that shit. Get the fuck away from my feet. I don't like feeling self conscious, even if your fetish is your fetish. I've only had like a couple guys do that. I'm good. Well, it's also like weird because you're just supposed to be like. You're supposed to be like. Am I supposed to be? Do I have to like be? Do I have to participate and act like I like I will this? Do I have to be part of this? Like I'm gonna, I'm ticklish. I'm gonna kick you in the mouth, dude. I mm. can't. I, I, like I, I'm too ticklish. Mm. And there's no way I don't like being tickled. But that didn't tickle me. It just felt like it just feels like 
I'm you know what it like, is? I don't know. I've lost respect for you. <laughs> I just, what do you, why well, are you? That's, I wouldn't go, I don't go that far. I, you're degrading yourself. Why are you licking my feet? They're but fucking think, gross. But, but, but they might not be doing it to degrade themselves. They may be doing it because they just, there's something about, I don't, I mean, I can't. It might, I do not have good, I do not have like sexy, you probably have sexy feet. I'm, I'm looking no. at them. You have gorgeous feet. I would put your feet in my mouth <laughs> to this point. They're unbelievable. <laughs> well, they're lasered. <laughs> I don't like any kind of guy degrading themselves in bed. I'm very beta in bed. I, I just, mm. I'm not. Do you do role play or anything like that? Nope. I don't act do on you, my days off. Do you off. make any noise? She means beta like the fish. She'll find herself. <laughs> <laughs> she has to be alone. I want to be alone do in a you bowl. Make any, do, you, do you like to go down on guys? Yes, but I don't, I'm not a super big fan of guys going down on me. Because most of them aren't very good at it. That's right. And, and that's I and I don't want to be a showrunner on my nights off. I mean, I, there's a lot of pretending. Mm -hmm, that like, I've actually happen. thought about this so many times about... Swear to God, I'm like, I regret every time I have fake moaned because these guys are out there feeling so fucking confident. They I have this one boyfriend in particular that was just the worst. <laughs> the worst <laughs> at <laughs> having, just having sex. In fact, he went down on me twice during the years we were together. And I asked him once, I said, why don't you ever go down? But by the way, I don't want you to. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm just wondering why, because I feel like most guys I can't get out of my vagina, and I'm like, you have to fake it all the time. <laughs> so he was like, because it's so fucking warm. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, he said he's like, well, I just haven't had a lot of you know experience doing it, and I was like, oh, and that's when I was also like, mm, he may like Benton instead, you know, that might be his kind of game instead. No. Right, 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 right. Um, but also, the it was like every every time we had sex, every time, dark spooning from behind. Every time. Dark, emotionally dark, or it was just dark? <laughs> well, it was a dark relationship. Both. But it also lights out. Light, lights out. Lights dark. out. It was like swooning from behind. So it's like you don't have to see my face. You don't have to see that as a girl. Oh, all those kind of things. no. Yeah. And I didn't put all those Been pieces there. together until later. Been there. And then you're like, but I mean, first of all, I got evidence about something. Mm -hmm. And then I put the other pieces together. I was like, oh, that's what all that. That's what oh. that was. There's a, I mean, look, I have dated guys that are gay straight up that you knew were gay that's my demo didn't know what the time didn't put did they know yes mm. i think i i think they well this one in particular i think had like repressed it and just was like disassociating in some way and it was the only guy i've ever dated who was like adamantly would not have sex with me on my period <laughs> and it was like so weird that was like how and, and i remember at the time like being shamed for it uh -huh. That's the lip balm you got me, Benton. Oh, Laneige. It's the best because it's actually a lip mask. Oh, so good, yeah. The I Koreans have, know what they're doing. I have kept Olivia here so long, her lips are drying up. <laughs> no, or, this is not, fun. The, not the ones down low. I know those think, are set. I think the, the, everybody else, you guys, you guys happy here? You guys want to go home to your loved ones? Because <laughs> I'm fine here. She is my loved one. We're yep, doing this forever. I'm moving in. So we basically, like, I remember calling a friend of mine and like I was like embarrassed and like ashamed and he had actually shamed me into believing like I was like gross. It was just this and I didn't realize till later I was like, oh no, you just are not into women. Oh like, yeah. Like it's just a little blood doesn't. Which is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it is a hassle. It is pretty gay to be in love with women. I mean, it's um, like. No, it's embarrassing to like men. <laughs> I, I, my girlfriend I told her like I don't know how many years this go goes with how many years ago this was, but my um, I told my girlfriend I was like, well, you know, he wants to like have sex on my period, and she's like, I think that's so fucking hot. I was like, why? Yeah. She's like, because he doesn't he's not grossed out by things and blah 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 blah. I was it like, is. okay. And then since then it'd been like a like I don't try. I'm not I'm not that I'm not somebody that's going. Will he? Well, I wasn't doing what you were doing. Like yeah. why is he? <laughs> I don't think about it. I'm always like, yeah, some people whatever. But um, the guys that do, which is pretty much a lot of guys, mm -hmm. almost all the guys. I'm always like, oh, I have just because she put that in my head that like that's like I get a little bit more respect for him. Yeah, in that way. Yeah, I but think it, it's awful. But I don't know if I was a guy, I'd want to have sex in someone's period. But I guess you know, I don't ever have to think about that. As that studio head said, "Grow up, <laughs> grow the <laughs> fuck up, everybody." Um, okay, I'm gonna ask you a couple other questions. I know I have to let you go at some point. <laughs> I'm being very selfish. I'm okay, and I think I'm kind of. We're just gonna because I know that you can't. Like this is you're, it's an unedited thing. Yeah, I want. I really am interesting to see. Like interested to see how like how long this can go. Oh, we can do. What's the longest we did? I think Dave Grohl was almost three. Four hours. hours. Four hours. Right. Well, not Dave Grohl, but the longest. You did and you Sedaris. That and was. Cat was four hours, right? Cat Dennings was four hours we did, on Zoom. We did 
two and then cheated two and I a half. I think we also forgot we were podcasting and we just started hanging And then you it. just put out the whole thing like that. Mm-hmm. I do like a long podcast though. If it's people that, that's interesting, and I'm like, oh, it's only this. I don't. I'm like, I want it to keep going. It's a road going. trip. You come back to it. You do yeah. what you gotta do. I want to talk to you about red flags mm-hmm. because on this uh, podcast we always talk about red flags. What are some red flags for you <laughs> if you're um, uh, in relationships, friendships? Also, I think is important. I think we have to be careful with. For me, like for example, one that I was thinking about this week of a red flag is a lot of time we think about like, you know, oh. They act like this or they do this or they've been married this many times or whatever you think. I'm learning that for me, my red flags have to do with the way I feel around the person. But what side of me do they bring out? Like Mm. if I meet somebody and I instinctively start performing or trying to be too funny or trying to take care of them, that's a red flag for me. Because whatever's Mm. going on with them is triggering some old child. I'm recreating some childhood circumstances with them Mm -hmm. where I feel the need to be like unctuous and caretaking and like walk on eggshells with them. And that's and I just (laughs) I don't have to know why, but I just have to. I know me walking on eggshells. No, that's so real. Because when I first met you, do you remember this? We were in the green room and I was just sitting there like waiting and you went. I love that you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be in silence with somebody. For nice. for Benton, I mean, that's part of the reason we are so close is he instantly, and sometimes I get insecure, and he'll just walk in and not say anything, and I'm like, why aren't you saying good morning? And I'll just get into like an insecure spiral with him. <laughs> right. Like, well, you're doing yoga on the phone, so <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. But it is to be able to be secure enough with yourself and the other person to be able to just sit in silence and just like not make like bullshit small talk <clears throat> is so valuable to me. Mm-hmm. That's to me just like so authentic. Yeah. So my, um, it's hard to say, like, it's interesting. That's a great red, like, I think a red, uh, it can be as small as like, well, a red flag in a relationship. If, if you're, if the guy doesn't love his mother or a mother figure. Great. Great. Don't never date a guy who Great. doesn't love his mother or a mother figure. Great. Like, because he will not love you. Um, I love red flags. Um, <clears throat> I That's would, a red flag. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, people that can't be alone is a big, big red flag yes, for me. People is. who call everybody their best friend is a red flag for me. People who are really attached to a fight about something but not actually fixing a problem. Yes, people that want to be in the problem and not in the solution. Yes. Which most, and this is a lot of like friendships, people, it's taken me a long time to realize that a lot of people are comfortable in drama, are comfortable yeah. in dysfunctional situations. And when we do work on ourselves, that doesn't mean everyone around us is are doing the same congruent work. A lot of people want to be in adrenaline. They want to be in drama. It makes them feel important. They want to people please. They want to rescue someone. They want to clean up a mess. That's their definition of Especially love. Especially right now with all the social movements happening, a lot of people are more excited to fight online than to actually solve the problem. Yeah, for sure. But I just, it's, it's in a lot of friendships when I meet a new potential friend and they're like I'm in this relationship and he does this and and I'm like this is going to be exhausting right you want to be in something dysfunctional you don't want to actually solve it you don't want to actually leave you want to stay in it I've been there I know what that is Mm -hmm. you don't actually leave until you're ready but I'm not going to be able to be a good friend to you Mm -hmm. by just enabling this and listening to it and you know I'm going to end up judging you and like it's just not a good match we're in different places for the friend for the friend Mm. you know um I love red flags, but it's like interesting. Like hearing you, hearing your red flags. Like these are like I'm like because I I love seeing them. I have I have a I've had a bad habit of um, like in my in my past, like seeing red flags in relationships and just continuing to walk. I can. Tor- con- I'm like, oh, that's a fire. I can contort a red flag. I can like paint a red flag white. I can go this. I can see a red flag and say, okay, this person hates their mom, and I can turn it into you need to be more forgiving and more compassionate mm-hmm. and this person is going to make you better and this person is a trauma survivor and you're going to heal the rift uh-huh. with his mom. You're going to oh. fix his relationship with oh, his mom man. and I will mother micromanage and martyr and think I need to repair their relationship instead mm-hmm. of just going, no, just turn around, make a U-turn, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Mine is uh, is that I I think to myself, you know what? I fuck up and I mess up. Yep. And, I, and you know what? I'd like somebody to give me another shot. Which is true. Like, and that's yeah. a healthy attitude. But the thing is I find with people is like, especially with the guys in the past where they mess up and I forgive them too fast. Mm. Because I because I go through that. I'm like, okay, I want to forgive. And like, they haven't really learned their lesson enough. Yeah. And they're kind of like this reset where they kind of would go back. Um, uh, I There's a girlfriend that I 
I liked. Um, and she's in her business. And I, um, we finally had dinner and hanging out at her house. And then she was like telling me about her life, like really got really into it, which is totally cool. I like getting right into things. But then she says to me, because of things that happened to me when I was younger, like I'm just such a big flirt. Like I flirt with everyone. Like I just can't help it. Like all my friends, like my friends are used to it because I flirt with their husbands and their boyfriends. And just, it's just like how I am. I just kind of, I just, you know, I feel like I get, you know, I get validated by my sexuality and it's nothing like not to worry about, but like, it's just something that I do, but like I would never act on it. And I was just like, I never <laughs> hung out with that girl again. Off after Wild. this, I'll tell you guys who she is. But I was just like, it, it was just like, I was like, people, you know, people who, that's a red flag. People who admit, because, you know, there's a, there's this uh, great um, philosopher, Francois de Lochefoucauld. called. Mm -hmm. He says, um, and I said that fast because I'm not sure if I pronounced it right. <laughs> <laughs> like ran through that run real so fucking amazing. quick. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I butchered it. Um, but uh, he's like, we often admit to our small faults to convince others we have no bigger ones. So, so if somebody right off the bat is going to be like, so um, I flirt with your boyfriend or husband because I'm just insecure about myself. That's right. all I do. That's my only thing. I'm like, no, no. So I had a baby with your boyfriend. Yeah. Someone who's always like, I just tell it how it is. I'm just oh, always telling it well, how no, it is. Well, no. Oh, yeah. like, no, you're mean. So that's yeah. somebody tricking you into thinking that they are... Um, uh, self-aware and safe. Yeah, like I'm acknowledging this one flaw so I'm so forthcoming and I have no secrets because if I told you that mm -hmm. one little secret, why would I lie about anything else? Right. You know, it's so manipulative. Yeah, you're like, I'm, you're telling me that one little one because you've got bigger ones. And also, fix it. Yeah. Also, uh -huh. fucking yeah. fix it. Uh -huh. How about that? Uh -huh. I love the person who's just like, this is how my childhood was, so I'm fixed like this forever. That's not how neurology works at all. And so if I do fuck up, it's your fault because I told you. Right. So now the ball's in your court. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the one that admitted it. So if I do wow. it, it's now your fault because right. I told you it was going to happen. Yeah. Now you're dumb for letting me do this. I told you this is just who I am. I'm mm -hmm. authentic. This is just how I am. Bye. Fucking bye. Red fucking People flag. who like use their childhood at in their 40s as a scapegoat to their shitty behavior. <laughs> uh, people who use their therapy for that is also a red flag. Oh, Someone yeah. Someone mentions that they go to therapy like four or five times in a conversation. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What, what, what are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's also using, uh, yeah, fake. I also think because just- I had a friend who would always be like, well, I can do this because my therapist says I need my therapist. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not your therapist. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, need yeah. To like a normal person. Yeah, yeah. I think that there, there's a lot of, um, I'm going to admit all my flaws. So now it's your fault if I hurt you. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know what I mean? Like thing. I already showed you. Yeah, I showed you. I told you everything that's bad about me. Now you're, um, you're sick for moving forward with me. Or it's Wait, your fault now. And then I feel like I am. <laughs> like, yeah, why didn't I run? Yeah. Why the fuck didn't I because, run? Because, I mean, I think there's also something like really beguiling and disarming about someone who admits all their flaws. There's something, you know, and, and as you were talking about that, I, I realized a big red flag for me is oversharing too much too soon mm -hmm. and trauma bonding. So mm -hmm. if, you're on a, mm -hmm. if you're on a first date, I should not know about all your abuse as a child. I should not know this stuff. Like, I've got a lot of that stuff too, and it's taken me a long time to realize I don't need to lead with that because mm -hmm. what I'm trying to subconsciously do is avoid abandonment by getting you to pity me somehow. So I'm going to tell you all the horrible things that ever happened to me so you feel sorry for me because I don't think I'm enough mm -hmm. unless I'm damaged or broken. I think that's what's interesting about me because I'm insecure about this conversation. So I'm going to try to be interesting by saying all the awful things that happened to me. And then I'm going to overexpose myself. So I feel even worse if you don't want to keep seeing me. I'm now right. going to feel like disgusting and super rejected. I'm setting myself up for an even bigger disappointment. But it's like subconsciously my way of trying to sink my hooks into you so mm -hmm. that you won't abandon me by mm -hmm. oversharing, you know? And I've mm -hmm. been in so many relationships where we just overshared way too much, entrenched in the beginning, conflated love and pity, trauma bonded. Well, you're creating a false sense of intimacy. That's right. You're like, if you know all of this about me now, we're really close. That's right. And the only thing that creates closeness is just time. That's right. Like time and then trust builds into that, you know? But it's, yeah. You know what I was thinking? This is not a red flag. But um, but something within me that's probably a red flag for somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, I'm like I wish I was more interesting. Like I wish I had more. You talk about like you're you're, you're like want to say all this stuff about your childhood and make be really interesting. I'm like I don't like like I don't know art. I really don't. Like you, you know, know Francois. I, Francois de la. You knew Francois. I'm like, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I know how to say like, um, oh, I love the use of negative space. <laughs> Me too. I know how to I do this. Oh, space. I love how they collapse three dimensions into two. That's a good and one. And negative space is wherever I am. I'm like, oh, I love the use of negative space. And I'm, I just use that every place I go. I say, that, oh my God, I love the use of negative space here. And then they look at me, I'm like, I know. Oh my God, I love I don't, the use of negative space. I'm not a big art person, but a guy took me to MoCA. Is that the uh, muse Museum of Modern Contemporary Art downtown in LA? Okay. And I only know art based on how expensive it is. Based, same with mm -hmm. wine. I only know if wine is good based on how pretty the label is. That I'm trash, period. Yeah. And we went to MoCA. And at every painting, I asked the security guard, I was like, how much is this? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like. They're like priceless. They're it's like, at the MoCA. They're like, we don't know. It's at the MoCA. And I was like, can we Google how much this costs? Like, And then they're like, it's $80 million. I'm like, oh, this must be good. <laughs> That's the only I, way. I, I just don't. I don't understand. I remember being at. I remember it. You know, I grew up in Oklahoma, and I'm or not. I grew up in Japan, but went to school in Oklahoma. And I remember during college, I went down to Dallas to whatever their big museum is there. That's how non non artsy I am. I don't know what it is. And I remember seeing this painting, and it was just red. And my best friend in college, she's an architect major, and she loves art. Um, she's really smart. She's one of those people that says negative space, but knows what she's <laughs> no, talking about. <laughs> but there's actually negative space. I, I'm a devil's <clears throat> advocate. I like positive space. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at a Where's Waldo and I'm like, I love the use <laughs> of negative space. Um, and she goes, um, so I'm looking at it and I'm like, see, I don't get this. Yeah. Like I can do this. I can do this <laughs> and I can sit outside this motherfucking museum and be like, mine are just 25 grand a pop, y'all, if you want this. That's 80 million in there. I love that as soon as you went to Dallas, you said y'all. <laughs> no, it comes out of me. And she was like, no, the reason why it's so difficult and why this is such a piece of art is because, you know, to do this, there's no paint strokes. There's no, it's like, it's, it's all the symmetry and it's just evenly painted. He just did the whole thing and I was like, still like, yeah, I don't. See, I think that I makes you like more it. interesting. That I don't know. Yeah, that you're just kind of like, I don't like it. That it's, I'm, that I'm it's true. It's no. refreshing. It's refreshing, but after a while, like that's my that's my thing. And every dinner thing, it'd be like, <laughs> but you guys, <laughs> I don't want that thing. And they're going to be like, okay, Olivia. They're going to be like, oh, did you guys see the new, um, you know, David Mamet play? And I'm like, Pfft. I mean, as an actress, I'm like, I don't this read. Guy. I, yeah, I'm just like, uh. Uh, I'm like, who's Mamet? <laughs> like, I only, by the way, don't know a Mamet. I mean, I'm an actor who like, isn't that artsy, but I really fucking try to pretend, you know, like um, David Harbour, we were in the newsroom together. Uh -huh. So we're friends and yeah. back in the day, I remember he, I was like, he was like, oh, they're doing this uh, play at like a Shakespeare in the Park or whatever. And I was like, oh, we should go see it. He's like, yeah, you want to? Let's go. I was like, cool. I was like, so um, this play, I heard it's on at this time. Do you want to go? He's like, great, we'll meet you there. He's like, you got it? You're good? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll meet you there. We get there. And he was like, so he's like, did you get the tickets? And I was like, oh no, I thought we'd just get them here. And he's like, Olivia. And I was like, what? He's like, it's Shakespeare in the park and it's this play with these people. And I was like, those people are, the, the people want to come see them. And he was like, yeah, and it's this play. And I'm like, and that's a big play, huh? And he was like, he's like, and there's no more tickets because, and he, he's like, oh, hold on. So, because he's, because he's very artsy. Yeah, yeah, He knows yeah. the whole world. He's, he's like, hold on. Him. He goes around, he gets, sneaks us in. They put us in the back. And I was like, oh, and that was a time when I felt like, Oh, I'm real. I'm a dumb dumb. But here's no, 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 no. I'm also. I think the most interesting people are the ones that are able to say like, I get why that was good three hundred years ago, but we since have more interesting shit. But see, I can't find the since yeah. interesting shit though that's, either. That's, I'm with you. I can't. I can't. The old one or the new one. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what. But here's what I'm Shakespeare saying. is fucking boring. It's it wasn't it really boring is. when it was the only shit to watch. I get yeah. why it was interesting back then. It's not that fucking interesting. I've been to Shakespeare in the park. There's like bugs biting. You know what's interesting? UFC. That is riveting. my Shakespeare. <laughs> riveting. <laughs> Talk about it. Riveting. People engaging. just like beating the shit out of All each other. On the edge of my seat. There's blood. There's yeah, broken bones. That's there's real lights drama. Are at stake. I mean. Yeah, I'm also like, I, I think it's just to be able to like. It took. But even there, sorry, not to do. Even no. then, I love USC, and even then. I can't hold a conversation about how in depth it is. And maybe it's just because I can't really get into anything for too long to, re I feel like I can't hold a, I mean, I can hold a conversation about like the shit that I've got to, I've been, I've put yeah. into fires. Yeah. 
But like, I really don't think I could really like hold a really long conversation. Why should you have to? Yeah, you don't have to. You're Why you. should? Yeah, you're you. I mean, that's the Guys. other thing is that I feel like there's this this half the time people can quote hold a conversation. They're being full of shit anyway. Like, like when I ta- I was talking to someone about oh about Woody Allen the other day because mm. I have never liked Woody Allen movies. I mm-hmm. don't think they're fucking funny. Mm-hmm. I've never thought they were mm-hmm. good. Even before the shit came out about him, I didn't think his stand-up was funny. <laughs> I've always been in fights about this. I do not think men being weak and scared is funny. <laughs> I think it's fu- he's a fucking pussy. I've never, like, you know, Dan Keaton is amazing in Annie Hall. He's brilliant at casting and getting great performers. I've never thought... Any, and and if you love New York, it's all a love letter to New York. I get it. But I'm never and I was like fighting with someone about this. And they're like, but it's so brilliant. And I was like, do you really believe this? Are you just saying this because yeah. it, you think you're supposed to Conditioned. say Conditioned. Yeah. And you heard it. It sounds good. It sounds good. Yeah. Like I think we're all just like so full of shit, mm-hmm. you know? And I think it's important when you're able to go like, do I really believe that? Or am I just like trying to fit in or trying to make people like me or trying to seem smart? To me, the most interesting people are the people like, I don't get that. I just, I don't get it. Well, it D- doesn't do anything for me. You've just met your most interesting friend. Yeah, I was going to say, I love you. <laughs> I don't I know. Me. I remember with like, like David Lynch, I did that. I remember running around being like, it's so genius. And then I, I'm talking to other people because I went, you know, I, I minored in film. We're like, this is so genius. And then I remember being like, why is it genius? Like, can someone just explain it to me? And everyone was like, we don't know. <laughs> I mean. It's like, like Citizen Ruth is fucking genius in Blue Velvet is, is I now understand. Yeah. But at the time, I was just like, are we all so insecure that we're pretending like I kind of want to put out um, like I think David Lynch should just put out a total nonsense movie and just watch critics say it's the most brilliant thing ever Mm -hmm. just because everyone's so afraid to say they don't understand something. Yeah. Okay, taking another break from our lovely conversation with Olivia Munn. What a dream. What a dreamboat she is. Icon, legend, star. I love on this podcast that we talk about therapy. People really enjoy it, and I appreciate that people let me be so open and authentic and vulnerable about the fact that I need help. (laughs) Good help. Better help, frankly. Better help. Heard of it. Heard of it. Love it. We do better. We love better help. Because here at Good For You, we don't pretend to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> we are broken. We are a, 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 a shattered, <laughs> a mere suggestion of a person. We are hanging by a thread, and we admit that. What would you talk to a therapist about? Uh, I, I mean, I'm perfect. I was just. <laughs> <laughs> I think right now I've been lonely what if i just started crying in the better help ad no i've just it's it's lonely and i think uh, also the amount of anger that i'm seeing uh, around people because there's a lot of uncertainty we don't know if schools are going to open we don't know when we're going to be able to get back to normal and i'm seeing a lot of like anger and pain come up and Mm -hmm. when i see people in the grocery store yell at each other at masks i want to interfere but i know i can't so I have to mind my business. Yours are different than mine. What are yours? What are you uh, going to talk to? You know, I would like to talk to a therapist about why I cry every time I listen to a Kelly Clarkson song, <laughs> even the empowering ones, or why I'm still torn up about the ending of A Walk to Remember. Her name should be Kelly <laughs> Catharsis. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. We love that. <laughs> we love better help. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. This is professional counseling done securely online. I also just wrote better help into a script. Yeah, you did. I did. I read did. that script. There's a whole script uh, that I'm working on, and BetterHelp is in it. BetterHelp uh, is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches. They make it easy and free to change counselors. It's so great because you can just do it in the privacy, the comfort of your own home. You don't have to drive to a therapist office and find parking and feed the meter, and then you can't find a quarter, and then the meter runs out, and then you just got a ticket for going to therapy, and then you're like, to the universe, you're like, ah, I guess you don't want me to go to therapy, and then you stay crazy. BetterHelp solves all of that rigmarole. You can start commuting communicating in under 48 hours. Oh, I best. can't even get you to text me back in that amount of time. That's correct. Why don't you talk to your BetterHelp counselor about that because <laughs> I feel some resentment coming at me. BetterHelp.com slash Whitney. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 1 million people. That's awesome. Taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer to Good For You listeners where you get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Whitney. Oh, we love Thrive. You are I'm obsessed. obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm I love Thrive too, but no one loves Thrive as much as you. Yeah. 
Because I'm a weirdo. I, I, I'm a weirdo with the stuff that I put in my body. Yeah, we that order crazy. We order sunflower seeds, cheese doodles, grapeseed oil, wine, lavender. It looks like we're witch alcoholic witches with a child. <laughs> but this Thrive, what I love about this company is they deliver organic, sustainable groceries right to your door. When I send Benton to get groceries, he comes back with nothing I want. The grocery store is an adventure for me. Okay, you you never get me what I ask for. This is this company does. Uh, that is true. I, it is true. When I ask him to go get me um, vegetables, he'll come back with these. Pop tarts. Like, no, he comes. <laughs> He'll go back with these like nasty, like passive aggressive sliced mushrooms. I'm like, what are you? What am I gonna do with these? Remember, you'll come back with just <laughs> yes. like celery. I'm like, I don't want any of this. Like, so I love Thrive because you can essentially go in and um, say the kind of stuff that you like and mm -hmm. what your dietary restrictions are, and then they only show you products that are in, that you like. Th yeah, because I hate it when you buy something and you're like, oh god, I can't eat this. It has dairy in it. Or I can't, you know, when it's already gotten home and you eat it anyway because you have no self control, and then it's just you're full of shame and it's a whole yeah. nightmare. This is where I get that. I discovered that avocado oil. I am now yeah. obsessed with cooking with avocado oil. The little almond coffees that I have. You're obsessed with that those I, too. I I drink them all day. The grapeseed oil I put on my face I even get from here. Everybody mm -hmm. asks me where I get my my luminous glow. It's from th the grapeseed oil that I get on Thrive. And the 100 cheese puffs you eat. I do eat lots of organic cheese puffs. It's like it's a little like I have a two-year-old. <laughs> I just put them in a Ziploc bag and I put them in your purse and set you off to work. <laughs> As a member, uh, you'll also save 25 to 50% off traditional retail prices, which is amazing. I cannot stand it when kale chips are like $12. <sighs> uh, carbon neutral shipping is free on orders over over $49. That's awesome. Thrive Market tailors to 70 different diets and values, whether you're paleo, keto, plant-based, delivering the highest quality organic and sustainable essentials from groceries, healthy snacks, meat, seafood, clean wines, love it, non-toxic cleaning, bath, and body. Everything you need is here. The savings I get on my favorite clean organic products are awesome. I just also feel good about helping to support communities in need. Uh, in addition to membership matching, Thrive Market raised over $750,000 to date through their COVID-19 relief fund. Which is incredible. Awesome. Go to thrivemarket.com slash good for you. Join today and you'll get a free gift of your choosing up to $22 in value. Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash good for you. Start your risk-free membership and get a free gift today. Thrivemarket.com slash good for you. Once you've made a decision that something or someone is amazing, yeah. it's really that's hard for them to fall. Yeah. So it's like you want to keep, you want to support them up because it's like not them. You can't, you know, it's it's real. That's that's why people, you know, that's why some people are able to, you know, skirt around some things mm -hmm. because people don't want them to fall. Yeah. It takes a lot. I mean, same thing with like um in relationships. I was just today, my girlfriend was telling me about a friend of hers who caught her boyfriend cheating and all that. And he said he wasn't and she's still staying with him. And I said, well, she's like, she just wants to believe. I said, well, what you... What she's what when he what she's hearing is I'm leaving you mm. and not um like I cheat on you. So what she wants to hear instead of him saying I didn't cheat on you, she's like, I can't believe that she believes him because he she she knows she caught him she saw him with the girl. I'm like yeah, but what she's not she's hearing is I didn't cheat on you. She's not hearing that. She's what she's hearing is I'm not going to leave you because for whatever reason in her head she needs he needs to be this person for her right now it's too much for, and i said you gotta she's like what should i do as a friend i said you gotta let her write it out because she's not emotionally able to take the idea of him leaving her that's right and so you gotta let her even i've told a friend that so, her person was cheating on her too soon <clears throat> ruined our friendship oh i thought i was like being the big hero coming in telling her no. the truth i would want to know and it was like destroyed our friendship I wish I, I had. would always want to know. Right. So I'm, would I. I'm I'm the girl. Tell me everything. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm crying afterwards, I'm, like you have to tell me. I'll be so much more upset later. I'm like, I just I like to know like the truth. That's what you it's like. It's taken me so long as an adult to realize you just have to find your tribe of people mm -hmm. that think like you, because if you're in friendships where like you're the type of person that wants to know and they're the type of person that's like doesn't want to. It's just like it's not sustainable. Like, I have a friend who. I like well I have friends who like well one friend well she'll ask me something and I'll literally say like do you want to hear the truth or do you want <sighs> and, and she'll and she'll because she knows me so well I'm like do you want to hear the, what I really think or do you want me to just tell you something that will make that. you feel good and she goes 
Sometimes she'll be like, just tell me something that makes me feel Yeah, good. yeah. I'm like, okay, great. But like, she's also a friend that's like, if these jeans don't look good on her, she doesn't want to know. She'll get annoyed with you. But with me, yeah. I'm like, you tell me if it makes my ass look flat or makes my ass look weird or whatever. <laughs> like, tell me that those pockets are like, what What are people doing with pockets now? Like, it's very specific. Like, yeah. So like, I want to, oh, if, if I came over here and I thought I looked great and you're like, Olivia, don't wear those jeans again. I'd be like, <laughs> thank you. I, I, you for look real. too good and it's hurting my feelings. No, well- I'd always want to know that. I do when um, friends of mine call me to talk about relationships. It's taken me 37 years to figure out. But I go, do you want to talk about the problem or do you want to solve the problem? Mm. And most of the time it's like, oh, I just want to talk about it. And it's like, great. At least I know what gear to be in. I'm yes. listening. Do you want me to listen and just fucking bitch with you? Or do you actually want to work towards a solution? Yeah. I need to know so that I don't end up codependent st doesn't start breeding resentment where I'm mm. like, I was on the phone with you trying to solve this. I don't want to fuck up our friendship. I yeah. have to know. I am. Um, one time I was with my girlfriends, like um, some four of my, three of my closest girlfriends. And I said, um, I was looking around. I said, you know what? Like what they each bring. I go, my, my I go, my one friend, um, Kara, she's like kind of like my resident guy. She thinks like a guy. She operates. She, so if you ever were like, what was he thinking? Or what should I do? She's like, that's, she's the one who can help you. My girlfriend, Brooke, she's like always down to do whatever like you know if, you know like i just want to hang at home and eat ice cream okay let's do that let's go out to a bar okay let's do that like she's always cool um my other girlfriend jessica she's got ocd like me and we can just sit at home and like we can kind of just like you know do nothing and kind of get in your ocd or she can help me clean up everything yeah. so she's so i'm like i see what i i see what you guys each bring to my life but like what do i bring to yours like i'm like what what friend am i, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who am i yeah who am i what am i bringing because oh, i see how interesting and um my friend brooke goes Whenever anything happens to any of us, the first thing you ask is, what do you want? Mm. And I was like, oh, she's like, so if her and her boyfriend break up, I don't judge. I'm not. I just go, what do you want? You want to get him back, even if I think he's an asshole? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to make him suffer? Or what What do you want? Mm -hmm. Even if I don't agree with it, as long as it's legal, I will help you get there. You mm -hmm. want to go drive by? We want to hack into his shit? Like, let's figure this out. We want to go find that girl. What do you want? You want to call his mom? Let's call his mom. <laughs> I <laughs> what love do you want? that. That's me, and I like, and I won't. Not judge. telling you, I'm not telling you what to want. I'm gonna help you get whatever it is. Yeah, and later on we'll deal with like the you know like, ethics so, of yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> right now we don't have time for ethics. What do you want? Because like you know that's like a thing. And I was like that. Made, I was like okay, that's that made me feel good. I'm like okay, now I know. I love I'm that. that friend. Um, now the most important question of the podcast: mm. What do you do to your skin? I see Shawnee Darden. Mm. Um, do you know Shawnee? Just a fan. Didn't we try to get an appointment with Shawnee Darden? Yes. No dice? Um, COVID During pandemic? Happened, yeah, yeah, it happened right whenever we were getting the emails back. So you dropped the ball? No, I didn't drop the ball. <laughs> the email said you can't come in. That's what I'm saying. My I'm, vagina was too far back. She wouldn't accept me. <laughs> I also do Ulthera. I did Ulthera. It's Why don't I look like you? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, look, my, I'm hoping I need to do it more on my neck. Ulthera is a laser that hurts like all fuck. But it, it's one of the most painful things ever. Oh, truly truly ever but if you find the right per so the what althera does is it, it it's a laser that it goes deep into the the bottom of your skin and like where like if they were to do a, a facelift somebody explain this to me if they do a facelift they open up your skin and then they cauterize underneath which then creates collagen which then like fills it up and so this laser is just on the it's topical so it's on the outside so that laser goes as far down as like if they were doing a facelift right so it goes that far down but in order to get that same effect they have to be in the same spot 50 times, like 50 spots, like Ooh. zap you that many times. And it, and it, it's literally torture. It, 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 it's like somebody holds a hot iron that's to right. your face. That's right. And it, um, has to damage the bottom layer of your skin so much that it starts to produce more collagen. Mm -hmm. Like it's yeah. a trauma to your face. Yeah. I did it two or three times over like maybe like three years or something. And I took two Vicodin, Mm -hmm. I had to smoke weed because I was getting like physically violent with the person that was doing it. Yeah. And then and the thing is like this. So when they're doing it, you can't say stop because they, they have, have to, to keep doing it. Oh, until because they need to create that burn down there. You can't stop. and go. So that's why you have to go 50. If it says 50 times right there, you got to hold on. Now, the, if you have the wrong person. So it's interesting because um, I was looking at the machine. I had somebody show me once. And like playing video games, like I, I was able to see like, oh, it's kind of like a video game. I'm like, you have to go, I tell the person myself, because you have your nerves that come through and you see on the screen, there's like this black line and there's a white line and you can see where the nerve comes through and they just have to find it in this right space where the nerve isn't there. And then once you 
see it. I'm like, now you now go, now go, now go. So oh. I I will guide them. So that's why it hurts so much because you have the woman who's just going over your face and just doing it over and over, but your 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 face is like moving around and and your nerves are jumping because it's like, you know, going yeah. through this. So I watch the screen and be like, go here. Stop, 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 stop. It's like whack-a-mole or yeah, something. Yeah, it is. It's it's like a little video game that you gotta go, it's Okay, now it's right there. But it is a, it, it was a huge help. Yeah, but the topical lasers, a lot of people ask me about this because my face is so fucking shiny. The topical lasers, I found thin my skin. They say over... Did you, did you, did you ever do... Um, a, a Flaxel. Braxel. Well, I the, never so, did. Well, well, no, the thing... If you ever... Do, people do... Um, uh, like acid peels and things like that. Yeah. Because when you do too many peels on your skin, or even just one... You're, um, you actually strip your pores off so your oil doesn't have anywhere to go and underneath that's why people's skin looks too shiny and Ooh. that's why this oil stays on top you have to be really careful too many times of like stripping your skin off the, your, the top because that's why you see these older women and they all look shiny and then the thing is they think they look young but just everybody ends up looking old because Crazy. they all look that age. Like a so you super have to really, old lizard. Yeah, you have to be really careful about how much you strip your skin. And when you do these topical lasers, like the, what's it called? Um, Fraxel, uh, Fractora. There's another one, um, uh, Laser Bright, some shit. It oh. takes the hair off your face and that makes your face shinier as well. Why do you? It's like takes off the top, what is it called? Um, laser X. The laser one. I've done it. It's like to get off sunspots and stuff like that. I would always do it. Photo, done... photo facial. Is this real? <laughs> photo facial? <laughs> it was in a mini mall. It's like photosynthesis. In Reseda. It was, it's whatever, the topical thing that takes off the dead skin yes. cells on top. Uh, yeah, I've done uh, BBL, broad band light treatment, mm -hmm. which is spot treatment on my sunspots. Yeah. That was a huge difference on That's my face. That's good. Because I actually, since COVID, I haven't done it and like, and I, I can tell like I've been, you know, been out in the sun more or whatever, but like that brightens up your face a lot more than just doing your whole fucking face. Your skin is wild. Really? So good. Oh my God, thank you so it's much. It's so, so beautiful. Do you have any like major products you love besides Shani? But she sells products. Yeah, yeah, she started selling products. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of obsessed with the like Honest Beauty oil. Mm -hmm. And then this uh, other skincare line called Mara. Mm -hmm. um, and she's got a lot of really interesting like creams and balms. Um, that Korean lip thing. Blood yes. Niche. Yes. Benton got this for me. I um, have it beside my bed. And I kind of make my own body lotions like with kind of like coconut oil and like different stuff like that. Nice. Um, just because not only during pandemic because I was bored because <laughs> I'm looking at people like you're making, full Amish. Oh my God. People are doing so much on Instagram and I was I like know. it's sad. I mean <laughs> it's hard to watch. It is hard to watch. It's hard to watch frankly. <laughs> It's really hard. You're, can to watch. I tell you something? And and I know I have to let you go. I must commend you. You say that because you need. You're to, actually the hostage. Wanna, I know. Right? I know. But, you know. I, but I know you keep I'm, saying that, and I keep saying I'm cool, and I feel like you really want to leave. No, I'm having so much fun, and I'm just codependently worried that I'm like like bothering you. But it's a pandemic, so where the fuck are you gonna go? Yeah, you I've got nowhere going to on. go. I'm so excited. Um, you're not going to an I art museum. You don't up. care. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to the Mocha. They have a great use of negative space. <laughs> they have a sale on the painting. On the negative space. Your yeah. social media is one of the few that doesn't bother me. Really? Yeah. <gasps> Tell me more because I'm like that's an anxiety. There's a lot of people exert. on social media and I don't know if it's just because of the pandemic and people are being removed from their ability their their isms and their drugs, people are not getting attention the way they normally do. People are getting desperate for attention, especially performers. Mm -hmm. They're not able to go on stage, they're not able to act or do whatever the thing is that gets them their fill uh -huh. of, you know, ego boost. Mm -hmm. I've I've definitely there's I've had to mute a lot of people that I mm. love in the last couple of months because mm. of the lives and the I'm all of a sudden a chef and I'm all of a sudden you know it's just I I always am like she nails it really that yeah. makes me feel so yeah. good I get anxiety with uh, glam shots because but you are fucking fuck you man you're adorable Aww, about it she you. posts like the po ones that aren't the yeah, like, be on like water in a cave and you're like oh what is she doing i know <laughs> but, but no but she'll have like this gorgeous glamour <clears throat> shot and then she'll post like the ones that where she's the like really her, stupid her right. eyes closed or where because most of them are that yeah yeah like the ones where she tried because to get one good photo you have to take 50 shitty ones i have learned well that makes me feel better that you feel that because like i when i go through the pictures i'm like i think I try not, I, I, I try not to be too impressionable, but I think that social media has ingrained in me that the dead eye look is the look. 
<laughs> like I'm like so if you look through all my fucking pictures oh my god like I did I have it today, so where I think funny. that all my look is just like it's all dead eyed or like I like <laughs> I just I just saw a deer <laughs> your eye like, your eyes like, are negative space <laughs> yes and I'm, it's just like I look at them and I'm like oh my god I can't oh oh I'm looking through and it makes me embarrassed right now because I look oh yeah I don't think I want to show you I don't I, think I it's live you can see it you guys, is it your sister it's real I mean, no 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 I'm looking at the pictures I took today before I came over <laughs> I know guys, you. it's embarrassing I can't I can't even but are you gonna post them <laughs> I'll post something but it, it'll be the ones that are less like I when you see them all I'll, <laughs> no. oh, I'll show you an embarrassing no, no, I'll show you it's not just one it's you the collective when you look at how at many the, I did and how like yeah, the amount in the different poses I love you with your Psylocke sword when you hit that painting yeah see that was like the first time I did it and I was like and then I tried to do more of it. I was like you know what this is the one I'm like I, I'm like I fucked up whatever move on I hurt the frame of my artwork here I'll show you an embarrassing <laughs> one. <laughs> oh my god this is me and Palm Springs trying to take a, <laughs> like a chill selfie but so how many so he, my thing is this I that only one's did. okay but one's okay I did three. I did three, and then I realized they weren't going. Do anywhere. you have a home in Palm Springs? <laughs> and I stopped. No, this was me visiting Tim Dillon, mm. a friend of mine. But I, I usually give up after two. After three, I know there's we're not getting anywhere. Okay, so my thing is, I'm trying <laughs> to do the pose. Here we go. Here we go. Wait, wait, okay. wait. There's, there's. Oh, here's a grid. Wait, but is that for? Re- but no, that, those aren't your glam ones. Those are you like showing something on your skin. I was like showing off my white eyeliner, and I took a lot. Oh, I take her glam ones. That's why you. Benton can see that. handles my social. But here's ones. the thing about the. F- one, they're too close to you. Like, hold on. Do oh, you she, to, Whitney wait, loves is, a phone right up in the face. <laughs> no, but you got to like do this thing. What? what? But this one, this arrow thing will make it go out a little bit more. So oh, if you go really close, look if you go really oh, close. Look at that. And then that arrow won't just like, won't make your, your everything look. Yeah, but like this is, I was actually, this is, you know when you like look at your phone and you're consumed with shame because you were trying to take one photo and you had to take 50 and you still don't have a good one. Oh, so, well, this is. Be- so my problem is I'm, I'm. In you know some, your angle. You, I think you, you sort of hold it up a little bit. Um, yeah, I do. I, there's a there's seven thirty um, p.m. I get some good light and it's above me. <laughs> I'm not like kidding you either. No, but here's the thing: is that I am not an influencer and I am not a reality star. I am an actor, and I tr- and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I I'm I'm so influenced by how they post, and then I'm like. And I'm like, what are you doing, Olivia? And then I'm like, I just wanted to look. <laughs> I'm like, I wanted to look like you just caught me. <laughs> <laughs> You're an influencer. <laughs> but like, I like, but no one's caught me. <laughs> it's a selfie. But like, I Your see arms them. In it. I know, and I'm just like, oop, me? <laughs> what? I'm trying to be cute. Like, I'm taking and like these the girls, photo. Like, you know, I, I like, I look at Kendall Jenner's, and she's like. Mm, Palm Springs with my bathing suit. Mm, and I'm like, <laughs> me too. <laughs> You're an influencer whether you want to be or not. Though. But but look, I it's don't know. So but I, my, if I try to, I cannot keep up with the Kardashians. Like for real. It is so funny when we take selfies of ourselves and try to pretend we don't know we're taking them. <laughs> you guys, like, what? Wait, well, most of the time, I'll tell you this. I'm going to show you this. The look on my face. I'm going to zoom in on this one. You're going to see oh, it from, no. from afar. It oh, looks no. like this. Oh, no. All right. It looks like I'm just like from afar. I'm like, hey, but if you so look cute, at my eyes, cute my, casual. look at my dead eyes. You can see Ooh. that, right? <laughs> I'm like this. This Glazed is what it looks like. over zombie. You look like a wax figure. My, my face. I, my, my, <laughs> look, see how I'm smiling. But my eyes are like, please tell me this worked. I got- <laughs> please tell me this worked. Do you have your phone on a self timer? By the oh, way, I do, but this one, my, my, I love that. That's the person I used to see at parties 15 years ago. Wait, <laughs> I was yeah. like, she's so confident. She's so together. But if you came closer to me, you would have been like, her eyes. Oh my God. Wait, she's this, and by the way, this is most of it is me going like this, like, did I do it? <laughs> most of them are this one. That of is me, and really then the timer is going off. And so I'm just like, is this? But I can't post that because it's really cute, though. Wait, oh, there was a lot of them. Then there was this one. Then I thought, then I, then I thought, I'm just going to walk you through it. Then I, uh, my, then somebody walked into the door. And then I saw the the on the self timer. Oh, that might have been cute. Oh, something. So I went like, "Hey!" Then I thought, "Let me maybe I'll do a pointed one." And then I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you said, "And then I'll be going over here." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then I'm like, "I'm gonna be pointing at my house." And then I thought, "You know what? I can't do this." So now I'm. I came up with my caption. I was like, "I'm gonna be. I'm gonna post a caption that says I'm pointing at nothing." But then they all just came out stupid because then the joke was not that funny after uh, like 20 photos. And it's just, it's so demoralizing. It really (laughs) is. But I like that you show sort of all the evidence 
and emotional detritus involved in taking one celebrity selfie that's so glamorous. Mm -hmm. You show all the weird, like, awkward ones that go along with it. Most of the time, my face looks like this. Did that work? <laughs> I mean... Is it working? <laughs> it's horrible. Just the panic. Oh, the worst is when you have to, like, make yourself laugh for a picture and try to look like it's a genuine laugh. Oh, yeah, I got those in here, too. <laughs> Hold on. Or you, like, try to just crack yourself up so it looks like an organic laugh, and you're just like, oh, God, I hate myself. Well, then I'm trying to show the outfit. Oh, wait, here we go. Hold on. This is, let me show you. This is probably my most humiliating one. So I did a, a partnership with Kala Power Pizza. This is the number of photos that Benton had to take of me. Oh, my God. It's Just, because I had to keep going, joy, joy, wait, you you're so, happy. But you look so pretty. Benton, you do her, you do her makeup, right? No. Sometimes. Sometimes wait, I, I do, but do. usually, usually. But it's so pretty. I do it occasionally for fun. But, but like, who did this? She'll slap it on. That's me, but it's the. It's very pretty. That's very nice. Uh, what, uh, like you were coming today. You did an ad? You look like you. Is an ad? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, no just I just, just sit around with it and I leave the pizza box just, out. You know, like, Stuck don't you, wall. you know, the thing about people asking you to do ads, it's like, don't you think it's more influential if, if they like let you put the, the box upside down and like make it look more natural? They're like, no, place the box like this. I actually don't do a lot I of ad stuff. I have a theory about that. I, yeah, I know you pass on everything. I know. That's the only <laughs> reason I get anything is because you fucking pass. I pass on this cauliflower. I know. Vegan pizza. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for passing. So other other people get crumbs. <laughs> I really appreciate it. But I'm not living in this. You're like ridiculous. Like you own Topanga Canyon. <laughs> I did. You're right. I you're, don't own Topanga Canyon. You've literally bought it with vegan pizza. I have. Yeah. All, with all of the crumbs you've thrown me, I have managed to build a Wait, real estate empire. So what were you saying? One woman's trash. I, <laughs> Another person's <laughs> Topanga Canyon. And I, <laughs> I'm trying to look. My phone photos are all dogs. And videos oh, of you, Benton. Oh, God, this is pretty embarrassing. Oh, God. You know when you try to do a selfie? Oh, God, this is me and my dog. Here's another chunk of selfies I tried to do. Like a burst. Here's the interesting thing, right? A selfie no longer is just um, for... Why is your face so shiny that you have a mask on? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like overly is, shiny, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? This is what my face looks like before I go to bed. What do you put on it? <laughs> I lube it up in oil. Like snail. Yeah. Snail stuff. It's, I, I put on grapeseed oil. I put on this oil that you're getting mm -hmm. in your gift bag called, what are you doing? Okay, don't sweat <laughs> too much. Jesus. Oil is very. <laughs> Mom has been sending some nudes in quarantine. Uh -oh. I'd be easy with the swiping, Olivia. Wait, so, but but the interesting thing is when you take those, you were taking them to for yourself or are you taking them to post? I don't know. Oh, she will post them. This look how fucking shiny I look. I look batshit crazy. <laughs> okay, here's wait, look at this. Like I'm covered. I've never seen that. I look like I'm this covered. is the worst one when I'm like I I'm acting as if I'm taking like I'm at a photo shoot in my own home when it clearly is on self timer. <laughs> like it's more pathetic because is that a drawing of the guy from um a six fingered man? It is. That's Anigo Montoya. A friend drew that for me. That's amazing. Yeah. Weird. Good eye. Thank you. It's on the ground. I was looking at your butt. I mean, and then you scroll down. And then I scrolled down. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is. <clears throat> it's just so humiliating to go through your photo. It really is. It well, really I found it's this, bringing up a lot. This is one I probably will post because it's just like That's I look like gorgeous. an gorgeous. But I'm like, I look. This is me. It's not supposed to be gorgeous. So how many? Oh, oh God! You. Oh, sorry. I didn't look at your face actually. It's gorgeous, but you look um, like you're having either a seizure or an orgasm. <laughs> Both. What? Um, how many photos does it take to get like the selfie? Oh wait, wait! Oh, oh, oh my I God! Okay, so many. Before Benton did one, I had to do. This is actually the most embarrassing thing in my phone. More embarrassing than nudes. More embarrassing than pretty much what? anything. This is me trying to do the first round of photos of me posing with a pizza. <laughs> oh no. Oh, there, there's so many in your fridge. It's, a, it's, a, it's as if there's nothing else that you eat. Is that part of the ad? You know they tell you all these things like you can't. I had to wear green. They said you had to wear green? Yeah, they preferred it. But to be fair, she does eat those pizzas. I really, I mean, I, I had them. So I was like, I might as well. Do you still have them? Yeah. Kali Power. I'll make Cute. You. But look at how many photos I took and I don't think I posted any of them. You know what I like to do? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I like this one. I can see, I'm going to hold it where we can get the live action. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> Watching her just, oh, oh, that was like a, oh, and then the mouth comes open at this point. <laughs> oh, yeah, there it is. Watch. But it's a live Hold photo. Hold on, it goes this, and then ah, she's going to, uh, and ah, then we're going to, oh, ah, ah. 
<laughs> Sometimes you'll see uh, Whitney will send a picture, and if you hold it down, she'll go. <sighs> <laughs> you see me at the at end. the end of it. She'll go. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I, what if they just let us take what we really want to take? It's just like us with the cash. I just cash pizza done. Um, okay. Last thing, last thing. I swear, I'm gonna ask you is, do you have any money advice for people? Mm-hmm. I always like to ask people money advice. That's great. I always say, uh, put away 30% of your paycheck because you don't have it. If you make $100, you did not make $100. You made $70, mm-hmm. right? Because you're going to have to pay taxes yeah. later. It took me a long time to figure that out. Do you have any like things you wish you would learn when you were younger about money? Well, I think the, the best piece of advice I could give about money is it's not how much you make, it's how much you save. Mm. People are spending way too much and we're wanting to buy these so much, you know, like you want to keep up with people. I want to have this. I want to, it's like, it's not how much you make, it's how much you save. Mm. You can make a ton and you can spend it on a lot of crap. You know, all that really matters is how much you have in your bank account and how much you can like, you know, like take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I do say no to a lot of things is because um, I save my money. I'm like, I'm a big saver. I always have been. And I don't, like, I don't need, like, all these multiple homes yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, <clears throat> I just don't see that need right now. And uh, and so I save all my money. So that I, I just learned early on, or I believed early on, that if I save my money, I would never have to take a job mm. just to pay my bills. I want to be able to have my artistic integrity. And, you know, that's what my money is being saved for, so that I can make artistic decisions based on whatever I want to do, not what I have to do. And by the way, that means I can take a risk here and there or I can say no to things. And I mean, the other day I said, you know, right before the pandemic, I said no to something like it was a lot of money, Mm. but there was just too many variables. It looked really great. It was a really great project and I loved everything about it. Um, But the executive producer who wrote the first two episodes that I read, were it was amazing. He's amazing, but he wasn't going to keep writing them after that he's gonna be executive producer but there's gonna be somebody else writing after that and I just yeah. was like I just didn't think that I could sign up for something that I didn't know who was gonna be writing after that and so my worst case scenario was not this show um, mm. bombing um, it was it being moderately successful and I have to do it for six years yeah. and so then I'm on this show that I think starts off really great. I think it's really interesting, but mm-hmm. I just don't know who would be, who am I signing on yeah. for on the third episode yeah. and then from then on. And then, and then uh, I'd make so much money. And I mean, everybody was like, I had the head of the the studio call and be like, hey, do you know you're going to, like, we're talking, you're like, yeah. they're like in a few years, you're going to be you know, here. But I think people don't understand when they say like, <clears throat> you're going to make all this money. It's like, but I'm going to be working all that. I'm not going <clears> to <throat> be spending it. I'm going to be spending, you know, eight months in Vancouver from 7 a.m. to midnight. Like, it's just sort of like, right. what about my time? Right. And I think that, but as an actor, I, if it was like, if it was the newsroom again with Aaron Sorkin and they said, Olivia, for the next, you know, 10 months a year, you're going to be doing Sloan Sabbath with Aaron Sorkin until the day you die. I'd sign up. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, that's because I, because that was just, it fulfilled me so much. I loved it so much. Mm. If this show was like, it's going to be this, this quality, this, and we promise you it's with this, this writer, this showrunner, this, then I would have done it. Mm-hmm. But, um, like I had to, I was like, I don't, I don't know. Like I might, you know, the time is all we have. You yeah. Know? That's, I think that's the, be- the biggest thing about money that, I think the best thing about money is that it gives us time. Mm. You know, when you have money, you can um, travel better and get places faster. You can have better food. Mm-hmm. We know we can have better medical care. If you know, unfortunately, in this country, that's how it's like. And you know, it just allows us to have time and choices, which is like it might not be about you know for a lot of people like it might not be about a future artistic integrity. It also might be like the power to be able to like leave a bad relationship if you want to. Yeah. You know, it's being able to have future freedom. And that's time though. Yeah. So like how wh- how I spend my time while I'm here. Mm-hmm. That's that's on me if I have the money to support myself mm-hmm. and my family and to do yeah. whatever I need, then um I can if I start selling out or doing things that are, are just for a paycheck, mm-hmm. um I believe that soon it will be one of the last paychecks I cash. Yeah. So if I'm just doing things that I like, you know, even if it's a even if it's a it's a miss, you know, um, it's something that's fulfilling me in some way. I'm spending my time here the way that I want to spend it. You know, none of us get out of here alive. So, you know, Ooh. it's the truth. Ooh, why have I never thought about that before? <laughs> yeah. 
I've never thought about it that way. Mm. Well, you know, none of us, none of us do. So it's like while we're here, like make it count for you. I mean, it was interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, one of my best friends from college, Lizzie Goodman, brilliant journalist and writer. And she said something, <laughs> I was like talking about something and I couldn't make a choice. And I was like, should I take this job or should I do this thing? And she just goes, well, we're dying. So what do you think? It, like, it was just was like, oh, my God, we're fucking dying. I do feel like I should be doing more. I feel that all the time. Yeah. I should yeah. be doing more. I feel like I should be doing more activism. I feel like I should be doing more for my career. I feel mm -hmm. like I should be doing more for my family. I feel yeah. like I should be doing more for my dogs. I feel like I'm always feeling like I, sh I should have done more. I could have done more. And I think that's because anxiety comes over me and then I don't do stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally feel like I can do this, then eventually this guilt comes in of yep. like, oh, I wasted all that time before and I wish I had done this. And it's like this weird cycle. And so now it's like, if I think about my, my girlfriends who can't be anxious over how much time they lost anymore, because it's just done. Mm -hmm. I, you know, want to learn that lesson permanently that I need to to just accept my time and accept everything that's coming my way and just do the best. Just try my best. I really feel like it's the people that do the most that don't think they do enough. It's mm. always that. It's always that. It's like the fact that you're sitting here saying like, I wish I could do more. Meanwhile, I know so many people that haven't lifted a fucking finger <laughs> when it comes to anything, you know? And I think that, I think, you know, we have to, and it, it, it's so hard for me to remember, like we have to recharge ourselves, like in order to give, like our cup has to be full, you know, like mm -hmm. I always feel so guilty taking care of myself. I always feel so guilty. I mean, Benton knows I'm like obsessed about my self care and taking naps and like, mm. you know, protecting my time. And it's like, so that I can show up a hundred percent in other ways and rescue animals and whatever I do. Cause I know that I just, I can't be effective at it. Well, you were so good when we had those fires, you know, and then in seven Malibu and I was just, I was like, I'm going to reach out to you. And then I was just another, I'm like, okay, I can do this. But I sat there going, uh, I mean, truth, I was like, thank God there's people like Whitney because I don't know. I'm frozen. And I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm here, I mean, but I don't know. I'm like, but you are the kind of person like with, with the fires, you were like, I'm going to get in my car. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I'm going to just, you, like, you went right into it where for me, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I'll, I'll be here, be available. And that felt like, I was like, God, I wish I knew how to you do You were more. so f awesome. It, it, like this was, uh, for those of you that don't know, a couple years ago, well, it was last year, um, there were huge fires in California and animals were trapped and people's homes were lost. I mean, it was just a nightmare. And my thing is like, I'm not good at everything. But when the fires happened, that is where I shine. Like, mm -hmm. I, like time of crisis animals, like that's what mm -hmm. I know how to do. Like I grew up with horses, I'm a horse person. Like I know how to get horses on trailers. Like I know mm. what to do. So, so, and I also was in a fire as a kid. Mm. And wow. to me, fi I, I haven't really talked about that publicly, but when fire happens, there's just like, I'm just in. Like, Can I you just, tell that story? It's a, it's, How old were you? It's such a weird story. I was about seven and every night I slept in this nightgown. And when people ask me, they're like, have you always been into animals? And have you always loved animals? And I, I like never know when it started. But when I think of the story, I realize I was wearing a very long black T-shirt that was like a, a pajama T-shirt that said World Wildlife Federation and it had animals on it. And I wore it all the time. Like I was just already, you know, I grew up like, you know, sexual assault as a kid. A lot of times mm -hmm. you connect to animals because they're helpless and they're voiceless and they're innocent. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a, so maybe it was that. Um, I had a, grew up around a lot of alcoholics, but my aunts lived on a farm and animals, they don't lie. They don't manipulate. They don't use you. They don't exploit you. Like mm -hmm. I just always connected with animals yeah. and their innocence and their integrity. So I, I remember because I was wearing that and I'm not, I hope this doesn't get me any sympathy. I don't want it. But I remember my dad never paid the electric bill. Like our family was very much keeping up with the Joneses. It was like, have a nice car, but don't get groceries. Like spending money on all the wrong things, you know, mm -hmm. like keeping up appearances, but not like taking care of the basics. Mm -hmm. So it's like the electricity bill wasn't paid and it was the middle of winter and it wasn't... I didn't know at the time this was weird. You don't know what's weird when you're a kid, mm -hmm, yeah. you know? It's like, I remember just going to friends' houses and being like, whoa, look at all this shit in your fridge. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you, what's all, what is all this? Like, yeah. why would you have all this in here? It's gonna go bad. Like, I just, you acclimate to your environment, mm -hmm. you know? And you make it work as a kid. And we never had heat. So I know this is gonna sound totally crazy. I was seven. I would get, I would turn all the burners up on the stove 
and I used to get dressed on the stove every morning because I was cold. Wow. Which is like, now that I look back, it's like crazy to think about. And um, you were standing on the stove as the burners were on? Yeah, I would turn the burners on and then I would get dressed for school on the stove. <laughs> It sounds, I know it sounds. I know, I had to, I had to ask because I feel like people listening are like, she did what? It sounds You're very. You're standing on top of a stove, getting sounds, dressed with the burners on. How sounds, are you standing on it if the burners were on? Because there's four burners and I would stand in the, yeah, middle. In the middle. I mean, I caught a fire. What? <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> that's why, that's you know, I don't know how to use a stove downstairs. I have trauma around stoves. <laughs> Well, that stove downstairs. Good God. <laughs> okay, wait, so then. So, so there were four, you know it. how like stoves used to have four burners? Yeah. And I would turn the burners on and start heating up the room. And then I would just like stand in the middle and get dressed. I was little, God. you know? And I remember our cereal was right above it. So I would like stand on the stove and like open it. And then one day the black t-shirt just <laughs> went up in flames. Oh my God. And I have like scars on my legs and like burn scars and some on my hands <sighs> and stuff. And it was just, it was what it was and whatever. At the time, you you don't know you're being traumatized when you're being traumatized. You well, know I think, what I mean? are you just jumping through the fire part? <laughs> and it was what it was. <laughs> anyway, so trauma yeah. is very difficult. By the way, it was We fire. know was about trauma. Look, no look, look deal. we all get trauma, okay? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Trauma, trauma, trauma. It hurts you as an adult. You never get get over it. Go back to the fire. By the way, that was my first all thera appointment. <laughs> yeah, I was like, blah, blah, blah. I know I've got trauma. Anyways, how do I lose weight? <laughs> this is why my face is so shiny. <laughs> I kept catching on fire. <laughs> so wait, your thing catches on fire. You, because if you are a grown woman with with scars still, that means yeah. it was a bad fire that happened to you. It was not good. It was not good. And the and basically what happened was the thing caught on fire and then it sort of stuck to my legs. Yep. So I just I remember there was black mm -hmm. in my legs from the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was no big deal. Went to school. You no, know, who put you out? Me. I just like figured it out. <laughs> That's why I have burn scars on my, oh my hands. Gosh. So for me, like I grew up. Were you, were you crying? No, that wasn't really acceptable Are in you my dead home. <laughs> Did they kill you on the inside first? I mean, it was it was really. Were you scared? I wasn't. I grew up in a really dangerous environment where I have this emotional dyslexia where really dangerous situations I feel comfortable and safe in. Mm -hmm. And then really safe environments I get. Because um, it's not what you grew up I with, get right? antsy. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people that grew up in that sort of like, so for me for the longest time, just hanging out one on one with a safe person made me anxious. I'm like, what? Because mm -hmm. you're always waiting for the shoe to drop. Right. But when the shoe's already dropped, you don't have to worry. Well, I feel comfortable. You feel comfortable because you're disposition is fight or flight that's so right everything has to go up here and you're like oh you, then you're like cruising Dude, altitude. when there was a fire i was like yes i'm chilling yeah. like i know what to do i know and for me it's like i know what the enemy is i know what i'm fighting no one can gaslight me about this like it's very clear that this is the problem that needs to be solved yeah whereas for me i struggle in the uncertainty of life of is this bad is this person bad am i supposed to be doing this do i trust this person it's like everything is so ambiguous yeah. but when there's a very clear villain it's just like, I know what to do. I know where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I spend so much of my life being like, am I supposed to be here? Am I supposed to be doing this? Am I supposed to be working harder at this? There's no uncertainty when there's a fire. And there's something yeah. so calming about that to me. Wow. Because I know exactly where my body's supposed to be. I know exactly who the bad guy is. And I know what the truth is. There's wow. no ambiguous truth. So I remember as soon as the fire happened, I start driving out to the fire and it was so weird that no, it was so weird to me that no one was going in that direction. Mm -hmm. I remember there being like no one on the road and being like, how come everyone's not running into the burning building like wait, I am? Wait, just to be clear, when you caught on fire the child, you caught on fire mm -hmm. and then you what, twirled around and were in your school clothes yeah, ready to Yeah, I just like, I just like, like Cinderella? Yeah, I just see, burnt the clothes like, right off of you. Like the yeah. Low, that's the lowest scar you wow. can ever see. Um, the fact that you just, that means it was such a really bad burn. You didn't, you didn't go to the hospital. No. No, we didn't do that. What are we? What, what am I, Marie Antoinette? And no one. <laughs> what am I? Well, they killed. What did I grow no, up in Versailles? No one. No. At your, no one at the school was like, "What happened?" Yes, to you? I got sent home from school, so I went to school. There we go. And there we the teacher saw it, and we're like, "You're going to the office," and that was the first like, "You're going to the office," and we're making calls, and you're you're di a different kid. You're a kid that's like a problem, you know, or like your parents are a problem, whatever it was, and that was the beginning of my fear of embarrassment. Uh -huh. And being different and feeling like I was, um, my biggest nightmare was being embarrassed, which a lot of people theorize that the reason people become comedians is to control the way they're embarrassed. True. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the fires, it was like, it was, you know, I'm also a fucking adrenaline junkie. I don't really drink. I don't really use drugs like this. That's my... 
You need fight or flight. You're trying to put yourself back into that. That's right. Just I, I, I feel the most awake, alive, and good about myself when I am solving a problem that I'm sure is a problem. So mm-hmm. a lot of times I've spent a lot of my life solving problems that weren't real, mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. men and people and trying to like fix people's lives and, and solve problems that I created myself or mm-hmm. just like bo- like solving a real problem is, uh, you know, when it comes to like the animal stuff, I'm like, I go out of body, like I disassociate and kind of as crazy as this sounds, like I just say what I think the animal would Mm -hmm. (laughs) say if they could talk, Yeah, you know, and there's a giraffe in Malibu that wasn't evacuated. They didn't have a trailer for it. They're not feeding it the right food. They don't have a license for it. It's all fucking illegal. It's all abuse. And like I saw horses with gashes, you know, they were ripped open at this fucking Saddle Rock Ranch Malibu wines place. And I went apeshit. And, you know, and so I just, um, I don't, I, it's just very clear to me that when someone abuses an animal, like, what are you doing to women and children? Well, yeah. You know, if, if this is just what we see, like what the fuck is going on behind the Mm -hmm. scenes and, you know, and so I just like, I don't like liars and I don't like, um, anyone that abuses animals, like you're just, it's a non-starter for me. Yeah. That's like the one you go, if, if I get taken, like whatever happens that it, like you, it's okay. I, I, tr- it's, it's, there's something like, yeah, it's so true. Like, I, I mean, if I see someone abusing their dog, like, I will fight with you till I can take, I'm taking it. Like, I have a hammer in my car to smash windows of people that leave their dogs and not cars. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just that bitch. And mm-hmm. like, I don't see the world. I just can't imagine it any other way. You know? Yeah. It's just so clear to me that, yeah. that that is, uh, and it's intolerable for me not to. I yeah. can't tolerate it. Like if I see a dog in a hot car, like I'm smashing the window. It's funny. I had a therapist tell me once, he said, you know, it's interesting when it comes to activism, your career, your friendships, you're extremely clear. When it comes to relationships, you get very unclear. What is that? <laughs> yeah. Well. I think it's like an overdeveloped sense of, for me, responsibility and compassion where I think I need to rescue people and have the same amount of forgiveness and patience for people that I do for animals. Whereas like if I am dealing with a dog that comes from a dog fighting situation and they're nippy or they're barking or they're aggressive, I forgive them. I'm like, I know exactly Mm. why you're the way you are. Of course you're like this. You're scared. This is all fear. Like it's so clear to me what's going on. And then I take that over to humans and then I'm like, no, you're 40. Yeah. You could have gone to therapy. Mm-hmm. You could have fucking fixed this. I don't need to be radically accepting yeah. of your rage. You should mm-hmm. not be yelling at me in a parking lot. You're 45 years old. Mm-hmm. Like, pull it together. Like, I'm yeah. overly forgiving when it comes to men. And I also, in relationships, I think I have this um, really uh, just the fucking, it's, it's like Disney 101. I have this thing where it's like, I'm a weirdo if I'm not in a relationship. I'm a spinster. I've failed. Like, there's just, like, that shit Ugh. that comes up, too, which has just taken a long time to deprogram for me. The pressure of, like, well, I have to be with someone, Ugh. so I might as well be I in don't. something bad. Being in something bad is better than being alone. Well, yeah, it seems like it's like the the certain shitty path is much better than the uncertain path. Yeah. You're like, oh, so this one this one is for sure shitty, but, I, but I'm going this direction, and I'll, I'll eventually successfully die. And then, okay. <laughs> But this one could be happiness, but we're not sure, but it could be some bumps. I mean, no, but there's more happiness over here, but there's going to be some, I don't know what those bumps are. I don't, I don't know. I don't like, I don't And then you start doing math and I'm not good at math. So then I'm like, oh, by the time I leave this person and then I meet a new person, that's going to be in two years and they're, they're going to suck too. So I might as well just like stick with this person. Ugh. And it's just like, it's a fucking that's hassle. Horrible. You know what I mean? Oh, that's why I don't do math. Yeah. <laughs> Don't just stay away. Stay away from the math. Um, I love you so much. I love you so much. Wait, I w- w- I have one last question okay. for you. <laughs> I end these super awkwardly, but you're not going to let me. Um, what are some of the other things that you thought of me back in the day that you projected onto me? I don't feel you ever finished. I'm love very interested. It. Can I love- have a cashew? Can I eat a cashew? Yes, one? just so you know, the fans are going to... If they're almonds, the fans get upset. Why? Because, they don't like... Because well, almonds they are just country? sound very like... They're like an audio nightmare, I okay. guess. There you go. You're leaning back. I was jealous of you when we. <laughs> they don't hate it that much. I. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You don't have to leave the room or anything. I, when I first met you and first learned about you, or like saw you, I would see you at like meetings or or like auditions or parties or something. 
I was definitely jealous, but in the beginning, I think I was more... <laughs> Sorry, when I start laughing, I can't... Stop. I'm not jealous of you now. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. <laughs> You're <a> fucking mess. <laughs> I'm so comfortable. <laughs> those so nuts. Com those, I'm so confident. Those nuts. I know. You were just this put together, like classy, beautiful, mm -hmm. like feminine, just like portrait of perfection mm -hmm. <laughs> with no ostensible flaws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still none. None you, none you can see. I was a little. Yeah, water. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to actually. <laughs> I'm gonna actually tell you if you were do you really want to do this? I hundred percent. There's nothing else I want to do right now. Okay, so I'll tell you the time. I'll tell you the time. I do. I have a really horrible habit of like laughing and so, spitting out nuts and well, anything. Anything's my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also remember seeing you at Ali Larder's house, and mm. you you were wearing jean cutoff shorts, mm. and you looked so fucking cool. Really? You're wearing jean cutoff shorts. It's like my and, goal all the time. And like a look cool. And like a long cardigan. And I remember being like, this bitch. Wow. Like jean shorts and a long cardigan. I never would have thought of that. What's sad is that like that's still what I'm rocking. I haven't <laughs> changed. It doesn't, I don't think it's as cool now. But it like blew my really? mind. And you were to every party I've ever seen you at. I go in and like there's like five people standing in a circle around you and you're just making them laugh and being hilarious what? and just like so cl this is my projection of oh you God. as an insecure person who's like walking into a party like all scared that you're just like holding court and making everybody laugh and everyone's like waiting in line to talk to you and I'm like an ogre in the corner like that's just and she's so confident and can like just walk into a party and talk to anybody and then that's crazy. That's like such a, I wish that, I hope that everybody else looks at me like that. I hope that that's the same, but I don't think they do. And it was like a, like a, it, it was just like in a mix of intimidation and awe. And I don't get intimidated wow. by people. I don't really wow. give a shit. I just remember being like, I don't have an in with, like, I don't know how to. And then I always was like, we, I always thought like, we should be friends, but she can wear a cardigan and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> hey, you have a cashew right on your lip. Fine. <laughs> Good. Building my I brand. Just, <laughs> I have flaws. I'm authentic. Doesn't matter. I'm not perfect. I'm okay, like then you. fucking put it back I'm on. I'm relatable. You know what? Do it with your pussy out. <laughs> that little, that thing that hangs out that you said. <laughs> this is what it looks like. It's about this thing. <laughs> no, yours looks like. This is what my vagina looks like. No, yours probably looks like. It's more it's like. That is kind of true. No. That is what it looks like. No, hers looks like this. No! <laughs> what is that? A growth? That's no, a that's, that sticks no. out. Mine? No, it's your, like. Your vagina's like this. It's like that. <laughs> No, it's like a like. <laughs> 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 it is like no, it's like this. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> if uh, no no, if my lips are your vagina lips, this is your thing. <laughs> Why does my vagina have like a weird skin tag on it? Why can't it? It's round. The, I, this is based looks, off your description. It literally looks like this. I'm not even kidding. But you have to look at upside down. Hold on. You see this? <laughs> Why are we trying to get it in the mic as if Hold on, I got <laughs> No, I'm trying to get in the camera. So you're seeing it. You're looking at me like this. I feel like I should just step out and take the call from your publicist now. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know I'm doing this. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I just ate your vagina. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Okay, wait. I feel like I'm going to get a very stern email from them tomorrow. So you want veneers? You like your teeth, but you're getting veneers? What are you going to do? You have... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record. You have maybe my favorite set of teeth. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you have really good teeth. Yeah. You guys, there's some of them are crooked on the no, bottom. No, that's why. Of it. That's oh. why. Oh, wow. I agree. Somebody said once, like one person on Twitter that I think I remember, they're like, Olivia went and got like veneers. And I was like, no, I didn't. But thank you thank for you. thinking that. So that's when that. people tell me I got plastic surgery. I'm like, thank you so much. In Magic Mike, um, there's a shot of me. It's like um, after Channing and I, my, you know, our characters had sex. And then the, the camera's coming up this way. And I was watching in the, in the premiere. And I had no idea. I remember a long time ago, a dentist told me, like, well, your teeth on, on top, they're a bit crooked if you wanted to fix that. But I thought he was talking about the ones on the side that I was like, I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't mind. He's like, okay. But then I saw with this weird shadow, my teeth up here, like one goes in more. And, and if you need to go back and watch it, and it just looks like I got a, just a crooked fence in my mouth. My, my, I have this one tooth and I was on Invisalign forever. This one tooth, I know it looks like nothing. 
and I don't talk about it much because I don't want to be like I'm the person like pointing out my flaws. Like I, I'm, I'm good. But I noticed it. It's that too. I'm, I'm just kidding. I know. It's this one. It distracts from the lines on my neck. This <sighs> one in certain photos, like on red carpets, it looks like I'm missing this tooth. Like it casts uh-huh. a weird shadow, and it looks like I'm missing a tooth. So I haven't been wearing my Invisalign, but. I Have do. you ever seen people whose teeth don't line up with their nose? Like this part doesn't line up. Never them. thought about it. No. Now it's all it's I'm like going to think about. Here. Whoa. I know. I notice when people's eyebrows don't line up with this part of their eye. Like your eyebrow is supposed to, if you take a pen here. Yeah, it's supposed to start here. It's supposed to, yes. So I used to pluck my eyebrows like to here and it makes you look crazy, but it's supposed to line up to here. I do notice symmetry of eyebrows, but that's really it. But I have wild teeth. You have good teeth. Your teeth are like your teeth are excellent. I like this one little snaggle tooth on the right. Oh. Don't call it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like this one right here is so good. I hate it when people do that. They're like, I love the your imperfections. Like I love how your teeth just started. I love they your started rosacea. salting you. <laughs> it's like people say to me, they'll be like, Whitney, like the backhand of compliments. Be like, I love that you like don't even care what you look like. I'm like. I actually do, but uh, thank you. Like, I love your suit. You don't even care what you wear. I'm like, yeah, I put a lot of thought and effort into this, but thank you. Why can't we say things that, you know, you can't, like, I know you're not supposed to, like, nitpick and but about, like, things that are, it's not, like, it's obnoxious for you to, if you were like, I'm fat because you're not fat. But, like, it should be okay that we're like, I don't like this, like, my, you know, that my teeth look like this sometimes. Yes. It should be okay, like, without people being like, oh, you're body shaming yourself and you're hurting us because I have that same crooked tooth. It's like, so what? Your crooked tooth looks nice. Mine yeah. does not. I also, I'm grandfathered in. I'm 37. I'm allowed to not like myself. I didn't have the inspirational quotes. I didn't have Jay Shetty, whatever. I didn't have all the, sh- like, I get to still have low self-esteem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, well, there, that's a little far. I yeah. don't have low self-esteem. <laughs> you know what I, I what I realized something the other day, the difference between low self-esteem and low self-worth, mm-hmm. which is interesting. In- very interesting. Because I think low self-worth will keep you in um, relationships mm-hmm. that you shouldn't be in. That's low right. se- and like, but like, but you can have high self esteem and low self worth. That's right, and you can have a lot of confidence and low self esteem. Mm-hmm. I just ate one nut, and look how much smarter I got. <laughs> no, and I think it's important that people realize with the self esteem. I always want to say, remind people when people are like, "Well, how do you like get high self esteem?" You have to do esteemable actions. So it's also like a daily thing. Like esteem, you don't just like have it or you don't. It's like work. You, you can build it confidence over time, and you can't stay clean on the shower you took yesterday. Like, what are you doing today for others to build your self esteem and self worth? You know, mm. and that's like a daily practice. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. It seems exhausting. You're not just already. like, I have self esteem and I'm done. I'm fixed. It's like every day, like, what are you doing? Like, uh, lying corrodes your self esteem. Selfish actions corrode your self esteem. Gossip corrodes your self esteem. Like, these mm-hmm. are things that actively attack, like, death by a thousand cuts, That's your self esteem. And saying <clears throat> no to things that are beneath you builds your self esteem. Like, who was I talking to? Um, oh, yeah, it was that, that person that was like, she's like, I don't know if I should go on this thing or not. And I don't know. And I was like, say no. To something that is abusive to you or destructive to you because that's how you build your self-worth. When you stand mm-hmm. up for yourself, then you yeah. have, get to have pride and self-esteem. Mm-hmm. All right. I love <laughs> so you. We're going to hang out. Don't ride elephants. Adopt, don't shop. You know the deal. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, Jesus. Also, also, can you also throw in don't swim with dolphins in hotels? Yeah, don't. I mean, in hotels. Uh, I hope You know, in all those fancy hotels, they always like swim with dolphins. Those dolphins have been captured and they like live their life no. in these like, you they cannot. Live I relate to that. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. That's like one of the most horrible don't things. Don't swim with dolphins. Me. We're adding that. Don't it's ride elephants. It's always um, Sorry, I know it's hard to hear. We have a lot and of- if you've already done it, that's okay. Just don't do it again. Yeah, and then take your pictures down so don't promote it. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. right. Exactly also, right. we have a lot of special treats coming out later. You'll see them in the merch store. Oh, God. Y'all have a merch store? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, you want some merch? No, What's in the merch? Oh, what merch is there? Excuse me. I want to know. I want to see what y'all are making. Look how, like, swampy I am. Well, no, we're making we're- them. Love you guys. Love Thank you. Oh, oh wait, that's we- we're going. <laughs>